Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And we've got Erlen again. Hey, what are you doing back two here? Days and two weeks in a row. Yeah. What's going on? And this guy's back. If you haven't met this little dude, his name is Sid. Sid. Not named after any sound chips whatsoever on the Commodore 64. Yeah, so if you watched the last episode, this little guy was uh, debuted in the last episode. Buddy. Uh, so we've had him since Sunday, and he's super cute, and he's calm right now. So he's allowed to stay he's on the show. On thin ice. We'll see. We shall see how yes. he does. Yeah. Um, Atari's chilling out on the floor, so key, he's good. Keyboards will be stepped on. Yeah. Things will happen. Sid, see, we need a new. Yeah, Sid. Well, I've got it's to gonna, make a it's, new one. It's, it'll happen. He's, it's He's being a bit bitey right now. It's a process. But uh, yeah, as long as he stays calm, he can stay in the room. But if not, he's going to have to get kicked out because he's still a baby. He's still a kitten. He's just over three months old. And does not stop moving. Oh my God. Never, never. <laughs> but today we are going to be playing 2600 games. Very exciting some very fun games um and also we're going to be taking a look at a brand new game demo Ooh. from zach attack and zach andrew attack. davy andrew. a 3d real-time rendered full screen game demo it is Dude. i'm not joking this is game changing 3d this, we're going to take this is going to take the atari 2600 into the 3d world I, I cannot believe they pulled this off, but they have. Is that, and, is this and there's a, two game demos. Is this like a POC or is this like a, like, what are we looking at it, here? Is this... It's early POC. Okay, so we got ourselves an early <laughs> POC. <laughs> you like that acronym, eh? Um, uh, be, uh, but before we get to the games, Jaata uh, A, ja A, ja A, ja A, that's an, uh, the B, Jaata A, the B. It's, it's like a Portuguese French. word, I'm sorry. It's a jeté. Yeah, they have that sound, apparently, in, in uh, Portuguese. Je, je. Wow. And, and a couple other languages, too. I've been listening and hearing it. Um, uh, by Bitnamic Software, Fernando Rodriguez Salvio. And we're the second game we're going to be playing is Stellar Drive Mars from uh, Mirsad Seralika. Both awesome, awesome games. Uh, oh, and Fernando is in the chat. Fernando, welcome, welcome, yo. welcome. So we can uh, answer any of your questions about his new game. Uh, but first, we're going to thank all the Twitch subscribers Recent. who are gently scrolling right beside Ireland, right down there. Alda for Atari, Atari Arms Car Coder, Atari 1974, Atari Age, Atari's Maximus, Beer Polka, Bruno Stex, Charles Stoneman, Charles Willen, Chitlala, Sirenum, Remo, Dianoi, Danifacy, Dr. Moo Cows, Dr. Web Store, Gamma Dev, Great Offender, Harold Arju, JGKSPSX, Johnny WC, Carl G. Karakarak, Karaka 2600, Veltiver, Lambda Express, Mad Max, Maddie Sippy T, Mark AS, Mark Space, Sigma, Atari, McNews, Mike Sol, McDowell, Ms. Command, MK Smith, Mr. Funks, Mr. Fix and Money, Funks, Nathan Storm, Nina Mini, this now, Crusudograph is co-og rendered ghost, repentless, Fiji, Revit, Tulip, Carter, Pim, Six Sweets, Medi B, Spicer, S, Spear, Spinley, S, Ramirez, Diki, Dan, K, Tifos, Trek, M, D, Tweeny, Vexorax, VVG, Double Dan, X, Ken, X, Zombie, Alice. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. Thank and you. And if you would like to support the show and support this new little baby cat that's off screen, but he is there. I'll show him later. Oh, yeah. Let's... Um, you can hit subscribe or you can just follow us if you want to know when we're on. Um, and you can subscribe just like an anonymous donor of five subscriptions did just before the show. Ooh, five like, gifted subs? Yes, five gifted That's subs. That's huge, man. From an anonymous person. Anonymous. So thank you to whoever did that. Anonymous. So those names will be added to the next show. That's lovely. That's super, super awesome. Um, let's see. So we played some um, TIA songs mm -hmm. before the show today. Uh, the first one was called Exploring the Subterranean Passageway by Dupe D. And it's a really good song. Erlen was grooving out to both of these. Help, oops, help James and the cat, kittens and cats. That's right. But the second one, I've never heard this before, a dual TIA uh, uh, song. Never before it's have like I heard a, two of them. Little dueling pianos, you know? Now, like. now, yeah. <laughs> um, but it was not on a real, not on real hardware. It was on a tracker that supports TIA. Um, I've never heard of somebody making an Atari 26 with two TIAs, but 
it's completely possible if you put a second TIA on a um, cartridge and make it accessible. I would think it'd be workable, just like putting a Pokey on a Atari 7800, but maybe, maybe not. Anybody in the chat know that that's even remotely possible to hook up another TIA just using the sound part of it? Because it also does the television uh, part as well. Uh, it does a lot. But uh, it was it wouldn't work on a cart because no right sense line. Oh, uh, well, BR Pocock there. there so you'd know. have to make a, a board, a 2600 board that would have it wired in somehow. Um, and it was also in stereo. Or Sync 20, 22600 thrust goes for the low tech <laughs> version. That's right. Just hit go on both joysticks at the same time. You got it. There you go. <laughs> That's the easy way to do it. Yeah, you could sync them up using a joystick line, too. Oh, you yeah. could do it automatically, and that wouldn't be too bad. Um, yeah, that's probably the easiest way. Uh, Gamma Deb plus a TIA is probably more expensive than the already expensive Pokey due, due to it also doing video. But there's a way. Where there's yeah. a will, there's a way. Oh, but it's, it was tracked. But definitely check that out. I've linked it in the chat there. Um, and I, off the top, I also wanted to say stay safe. Right. to the view viewers in Houston or the non-viewers because they don't have power. They're amongst the 800,000 people who have not had power since Monday. That's not in good, the man. sweltering heat of oh. Texas, uh, including Spiceware. Spice, hope you're yeah. doing okay out Daryl there. Daryl Spice Jr., hope he's uh, he posted a thread on the Atari forums about he's, how he's sleeping in his car with the air conditioning on. To, to stay cool because you, you can't go in the house. Yeah, what are the options, right? Yeah, oh, I was watching man. the news and there's people being discharged from the hospital and they can't go home and they can't stay in the hospital. So they have to move them into like big facilities. It's just, it's crazy. So um, yeah, there is still 846,000 people with no power and they've restored one and a half million people. Wow. So there was a lot of... Uh, yeah, it is an EV. He has a Tesla. Oh, yeah, so that would be dangerous. To, <laughs> if it was in your garage, it would be extra dangerous, but still probably dangerous sitting yeah. outside, just the fumes accumulating. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he... Yeah, that sucks. But he's got, like, the trunk folded down, so he's able to spread out, and he's got some sleeping bags there. So He's managing. He's doing okay. Yeah, he's managing. Holding through and It still sucks. Way, lot. way unideal situation. Yeah. Um, so, uh, great news, uh, something I've struggled with since the show started, it has been fixed and it is the elusive Atari 2600 shimmer. Well, that's, that's the microphone microphone. Uh, and that was fixed after, uh, elusive Atari 2600 shimmer issue shimmer in recordings from my Atari 2600. Um, so Nathan Strum kind of prompted me to investigate this once more. I'd given up on it long time ago. Um, so what, uh, I won't read all that out, but what happens is probably people watching would know all about this. Uh, some games and some demos and other things, even the menu on the plus cart and harmony cart use 30 Hertz flicker. So it shows one thing on one frame and then one thing just offset by a line or whatever or writing on top on the next frame. It does it back and forth. Two, 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 two. Six, like 30 times a second. So a total of 60 times a second. So if this was getting out of sync and also freezing on things and missing frames, so what you end up with is like... Eh, 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 uh, and it looks just terrible. Absolutely terrible. Um... And a long time ago, Nathan Strom had suggested a fix uh, that I'd go buy a, uh, what is it, time-based correction device. And these were used on TV stations and um, places that would capture video to give a very clean signal. It would correct issues like this. Um, but this, this is something that is so specific to the 2600. There are, you know, there's games on the and Nintendo as well where they would use Flickr because they don't have enough stuff to be able to put everything on the screen. But, so I reinvestigated this. I, I re-examined all my video settings from the 2600 all the way through um, the uh, retro tank to the upscaler, to the OBS capture, to the output. And they're all like different frame rates. So 
Um, but what I found was there was a recent, uh, late last year, I think December, uh, September 2023, there was an update to my video capture, uh, video upscaler device that added in a time-based correction. Oh, that's incredible. These things are upwards of $1,000 to buy. And it just, they just did a software update and it's like, oh, you have time-based correction now. Um, I did not have this on. I don't think I've investigated it since updating because I update it for other uh, issues. I turned it on, set everything to 59.94, which is dub, which is 60 frames per second. Some some things along the chain, it's is known as 60 frames a second. Some it's labeled at 59.94. They're both the same. They just don't want to say 59.94 yeah. and confuse people. Um, and uh, I I turned it all on, put it all uh, at 59.9097. Oh, Is that right? I don't think so. I think that should be 59.94. Um, uh, and I recorded some footage from Elevator Agent, which uses... Now, this may or may not work because it's like being translated to through two things. Um and it's solid absolutely solid anything see there's flicker there but anything you see that's flicker is not actually flicker it's youtube and the display and everything like that i step through it frame by frame and there's no problems whatsoever like it is a solid solid picture so we'll be very good for today see, <laughs> so this, this is, is great be, news this is absolutely astounding this has plagued me for the whole time we've been doing this show so thank you to Nathan Strum to thanks so much Nathan prompt me to re-examine all my hardware and and to say again about the time-based correction which made me look at the updates and went oh my god time-based correction it really goes to show that like <sighs> oh they goodness. they always say if you can't solve a problem sleep on it and see yep. how it comes tomorrow sometimes you just need a fresh point of view and sometimes you gotta wait six years and then you'll <laughs> <laughs> it only takes six years sometimes he has very good news thomas oh my god it's so good um so what else oh i think it's time to get to the uh incredible tech demos by zachary zachary scalero and it's treat time, oh, it's time. Yeah, oh but before that time. it is treat time now last time we uh, thank you for triggering that uh br pocock last time we s let this little guy watch atari yeah do the treat time we're not gonna do a well we could do a contest right now but he might get interfered with we might just show atari uh atari can show this little guy show uh sid how to do it again and we'll just get him to ring the bell no contest doesn't matter to him he doesn't know what's going on yeah um so he can watch it again and maybe it's you know slept on it like you said he slept on you gotta it just like absorbed let it, it let it come in yeah let the master come into play okay atari you ready so let's switch over atari atari okay you ready okay you gotta watch this sid yep you get in the floor come on oh he's so soft <laughs> so so tiny okay watch sid watch 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 Atari do it. And then you get one, and you get one. Whenever there's a bell, we're going to give... The conditioning begins. That's the right. Pavlovian training. The thing is, Sid eats them so much slower because he has a tiny mouth, and he kind of... He still also crunches it in what, half. What the heck a treat even is. Oh, he's done. Okay, okay. We'll wait till the next one, and we'll give both of them again. These are good questions, Gamma Dev. Will his tiny tummy give him a treat ceiling? I think it's entirely possible. <laughs> it is no betting this time. Sorry. Just because he has to learn. Okay. So this is the bell. See? Mm. The way we did it last time is we put a treat on the bell. Of course, this was done in private without Atari. Hit the bell. No, you got to hit it. <laughs> yeah. it's early days pavlovian or asimovian oh, no, i said pavlovian <laughs> but honestly asimovian is is great as well so ring the bell touch it touch your paw to it like this no he's like no 
Watch Atari do it. Yep. Ring the bell. Hey. <laughs> there. See, I rung the bell. You show them, and then you give them a treat. Yeah, um, Sprite got it the second day. Sprite was like, boom. Sprite was a uh, master. Know. Undefeated, undisputed, <laughs> yeah. he double up. champ at status. Sit. There. There you go. Now, said you got to ring the bell now. Ring the bell. <laughs> he's still not sure. Like he's. Except he's not. Sid's not pawing it off. He's just eating it right off of there. Yeah. Uh, like, um, I think Sprite pawed it off. Are you going to paw it off? There you go. See? Atari paws it off. Okay. Okay, Sid, you got to paw it off. Don't. Come on. Nope. Use your paw. Use your paw. Use your paw. Nope. <laughs> Use your paw. Use your paw. Don't just chew it off. No, you don't do it. This is madness. <laughs> it is madness. More pixel than Sprite so far. That's all good. It's, a, <laughs> it's, it's part of the learning process. Yeah, it is. Okay, well that's enough bell training for today. Don't want to overfeed these cats. I just got to wash my hands. Tari's looking. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's over. This is the best moment of the day, man. Why are you... Why are you stopping now? Yeah, the bets can be, can Sid ring the bell once? That can be the, like, yeah, that can be the under over. It's like the bet on, will Sid pull this off for the first time? I think I'm going to have to turn on the fans. It's going to be a little background noise. It's it's getting, uh, getting a little warm in here. Yeah, it's like, why should I ring the bell if the treat is already on the bell? These are well, philosophical questions that... I mean, that makes a lot of sense. No, that one's too loud. That's because of the high frequency. It's, it's like vibrating. Ring. That's no good. But that one's blowing. And it's yeah, outside the room, so it shouldn't be too, harsh, too bad. Okay. Let's show you some amazing things. So, two incredible tech demos. Um, through the combined powers of Zach Attack, or Zachary Scalero, and Andrew Davey. One of the tech demos is for the 1986 game The Sentinel, and one is for the 1984 game Elite. So let's just take a look at a little bit of how this started. This is his post on the 2600 Wizards forum, Andrew Davies forum. A game I've admired for some time is The Sentinel, a 3D strategy game from 1986. Let's just skip to some. So you have a, a crosshairs. I've never played it, so I don't know much about it. So you can move around and you can shoot things and shoot those dudes. There's trees and mountains in a 3D landscape. You can... I guess you're trying to find things. I don't know. Has anybody played the Sentinel? Oh, just shot something. Oh, Thrust has played it. Great game. Loved it. So he thought, why can't I do this on the 2600? Of course, nobody else thought that. See, I like because this. it's like, that's impossible. I like this thought. <laughs> you, you cannot shoot. Okay. Uh, I think it could be done in the 2600, but I'm already exploring what if to see how things might work. So far, I've been unable to find out who owns the copyright. I'd like to do that. Here's a concept pic of the screen, might, what it might look like. Here's uh, the original, I'm guessing BBC Micro, he's referring to um, a British computer, and then converted to 40 by 66. 40 play field pixels across. Cla and classic resolution, man. That's what you want. <laughs> it's a classic it's what one. you want all video to be. <laughs> 40 the by old 60. 40 by 66p. The, the postage stamp size. 40 by 66i. <laughs> That's right, i. 
Actually, mm, wait for it. Uh, <laughs> so some chonky, chonky looking graphics there. As you can probably guess from above, my bitmap systems from Boulder Dash have a resolution of 40 by 66. And it works really well oh, on yeah. Boulder Dash, actually. Um, by eight colors. The game lends itself well to limited colors. The resolution is marginal, but I'm feeling it will work. It's about energy, absorbing it to build blocks and get higher until you can absorb the sentinel. Ooh. Okay, cool. It is described as a puzzle game. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so it explores um, graphics more and more and trying to get them to look better on the limited resolution of what's possible. Um, but then he plays with like the movie cart resolution, Ooh. which I, is it 96 across by uh, it was a half of 192? I'm maybe? completely certain. That or it, it might is. be 192. No. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks pretty good. But this is pre-rendered playing back as a movie, obviously. Um, so he's, he's like recorded video from the Sentinel and, and it works. It, it's a small viewing window, which is not ideal. Um, and some people have been saying that about the movie card cause it's like squished and squished this way. Um, but it's not bad for a game because it's not, it's not a widescreen movie made, uh, like phone resolution vertical. Um, so it continues on and he, uh, works on it more and more. Um, so let's take a look at what he's up to now. Ooh. And uh, and it is absolutely astounding. So I'm going to play this on a real 2600 using the plus cart. So we're in some POC right categories oh, right now, right. man. We're about, to, we're about to enter into the POC, man. Get into the POC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Going to my ROMs. Sentinel, and this was this build is from, I believe, today. Was it today or yesterday. So let me just read out some notes that he has passed me over about this. So, Andrew, uh, let me know the underlying display technology. Uh, the six sprite routine on top of the full width play field. So what is happening here is you see a full width play field, which is 40 across. But then there is the six sprite routine, which is six sprites in a row, which a sprite is eight pixels wide. Six, eight is 48. So it's a, a well-known uh, sprite routine to do title screens and stuff on the 2600. So you get a high resolution band of graphics where your cursor is so if you can see as i move my cursor across the screen see the trees are high resolution i move out of the way and they go low resolution oh interesting also really utilizing perspective with this sort of moving towards yes. us right yes so it is a static screen right now but it is you know 3d rendered um uh, the underlying display technology is Zach's magic. So Zach came up with this display kernel of the six six uh, sprites. So forty eight in a in a, a play field, a forty width play field. Um, Gamma Dev Fovated rendering. Yes. Um, so Andrew Davy says he t will take credit for the Fovated rendering, which is moving the forty eight across the screen in chunks. Uh, that was something I didn't know would work, he said. And there was a comment on a YouTube video that uh, Andrew posted of an early build on this and said uh, the person, uh, Octomed, said VR ready with fovated rendering. This is actually something that is done currently with uh, uh, it was VR. Um, right now with VR goggles, the stuff on the side is not rendered at a higher High res as high resolution as the thing in the middle or the thing you're looking at with eye tracking. Which makes a lot of sense. It's also interesting the way our eyes work is out yeah. of our peripheral vision, our brain actually constructs a guess as to what is there. So actually as yes. our, other, we actually don't have, it's why when people say like, oh, I saw it under the corner of my eye. Actually yes. the corner of your eye is weird shit is actually going on even cognitively. Yeah, it's so, not like it's it's not full color. You don't get the um, the actually is higher refresh rate on the sides of your eye. 
That's why when you, uh, or is it lower refresh rate? I can't remember. Um, but if you look at old fluorescent tubes that are going at 60 hertz, uh, it'll mess with you. Uh, I think if you look at them out of the side of your eye, they're flickery. But if you look at them dead on, they're not. Very, very crazy. Other weird thing about eyes is most people, it's not an equal view. For most people, one eye is slightly more dominant than the other. So it's also like, it makes sense that like really the focus of the center of like a, of a frame is yeah. what needs to be the highest resolution. And if you look, this is actually playable. You put your crosshairs over the cube you want to destroy and it takes about two seconds and the, the cube will start flashing and then blow up. And if you look at the tree, you're like, okay, high resolution, you move over, but you forget, you don't even notice that that tree's going low res because you're not paying attention to it anymore because the only thing you're paying attention to is where your crosshairs are. That's right. So it all kind of looks high resolution at the same time. There's Smitty B. There are more rods versus cones on the outside of your vision, and the rods don't do color, but they're more responsive. Yeah. And that's why, like you said, you see something out of the corner of your eye. Because it's good for, like, if you're something's chasing you. And they said that um, uh, your peripheral vision is designed for movement and not detail. Yes. So you see things that move in that part of your vision so that you turn to focus on it straight on, which is absolutely correct. Look at this cat. Look at this. Oh, he's so adorable. Look at this, Look at this cat over <laughs> here. What is so, um, uh, Foveda rendering is technique which uses an eye tracker integrated with a virtual reality headset to reduce the rendering workload by greatly reducing the image quality and the peripheral vision outside of the zone gazed by the Fovea. And uh, Andrew Davey came up with this out of necessity, and it just happens to be something that's widely deployed nowadays. It's so crazy that. Wow. The, how that how that works so andrew and andrew initially asked zach if he could make a centered 48 sprite routine over top of playfield with exactly that in mind i don't think we realized it would open a whole new way of displaying stuff zach and andrew worked together on uh, to implement the chrono color on top of that and finally the 3d rendering is andrew's doing Andrew wanted to make sure that Zach was given full credit for the initial work he did uh, on all the elf code which made this possible. So the chrono color is like a, a different color every every line for three lines and then it repeats, repeats, repeats. So you can uh, make things pretty much any color you want because of changing playfield color midline is very difficult, but you can do a whole line of one color. And then you can increase that to uh, the 30 hertz flicker or even down to 20 hertz one two three one two three one two three and to give more colors on top of that so this is impressive but wait for it now we're going to take a look at elite which i think Ooh. more people are familiar with it is a very very early 3d rendering game space game engine that um people hold at a very high standard um, and this is this is definitely from today so we've got the elite ship there spinning around we've got crosshairs in space and is this is where you can kind of see it a bit more clear what the um oh yeah where the resolution for where this is focused on especially when you have yes. it split in half where like yes. the section in the box significantly like a uh, different sharpness than outside oh andrew davies here welcome it's very early in the morning there i robot for the <laughs> 2600 now this i think opens the 2600 to any 3d game L like you could draw cybertruck now <laughs> <laughs> in this actually you could that's very close to a cyber truck um and you move the crosshairs over the ship and it explodes so this is interactive as well so this will run on the plus cart and uno cart boom this is outstanding absolutely amazing can you Im imagine a 3d space game playing one flying through space rendered completely in 3d with planets and <laughs> ships that you have to shoot like they could remake uh andrew could and zach could remake um star wars 
the the three D arcade oh, yeah, that, game that old school in three D. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is so much potential for like where to take these things. Huge, huge potential. This, why is this jumping? You can do this 100% smooth too, right? Jumping, jumping. I'm not sure what he means by jumping. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is absolutely outstanding. Yeah, I'm not sure what he means by jumping. Dave's like, Andrew Dave's like, how, how is it jumping? <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe Thrust is not looking at this uh, at the full resolution at thirty, maybe he's watching it at 30 frames per second. Check your, Oh, the 48 pixel focus. Um, well, you can only do 48 at once on the screen because those are the, those are the triplicate, the dual triplicate, um, character graphics. I mean, you could, and I did an ask Andrew this. Everyone knows that, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. So there's, there's one, two, three, four, five across now you could cycle through all five and just go and make it all high resolution but the reef like the refresh rate on that is fairly low it'd be 12 hertz and i think he's played around with that and he says it, it doesn't look as good and especially when you're playing and your focus oh uh, maybe means the box is jumping now you could get rid of the box and it would just be the crosshairs and maybe that would reduce the jumping or another thing is to smoothly move the 48 across that's probably what he's referring to is like start and th that would require a new kernel um but move the six um, um player characters across the screen smoothly that's the jumping so i don't know if that's possible um yes but you can position this smoothly right with asymmetric play field as well andrew says it's like well that's a very special kernel <laughs> very special because the timings are very very precise um when you're doing an asymmetrical play field you have to write to the screen at very specific spots to set up the graphics for the next play field but no idea just asking so if it is possible <laughs> that will make it 10 times better but it may the timing may not be possible yeah but even this is is great absolutely astounding we got on our hands so is a powerful poc boom <laughs> very powerful poc which expands like i said expands the world of the 2600 into the 3d realm um and i think it's interesting that it is doing 3d but it's in its own sort of own unique way like in a way it's like i'd be interested in these applications yes. for like game mechanics and how do we sort of like include yes. this because rather than trying to recreate a 3d it's got its own unique way so is there some exactly. emergent mechanics that can appear is there a genre is there a style of gaming that can kind of come up that's for that's someone above my pay grade that <laughs> yeah. figure, that's for you to figure out but it's interesting to think of like this is a different approach how can you take the limitations and make this a feature of a game and employ this kind of mechanically as a yeah. as an element like looking through binoculars you know yes. what i mean like down yes. the scope of a rifle like i don't not that that's what you do but how do we take this and sort of like embrace it and make it and, and emerge a kind of like a game design around this and early systems like the 2600 that's how games came about and that's how homebrew comes about too it's like oh we can do this in this way on the 2600 with these colors and these graphics well that lends itself to this type of game like i just bought i don't know if i've said this but i've said it in the in the discord i just bought myself a zx spectrum uh, the most desirable one it's, it's a really cool toast rack version but the way it does graphics is very different than say the 2600 or the 7800 does graphics it has a fully writable bitmap graphics on the screen you can put the dot anywhere you want uh full screen but the way it does color is eight by eight so if you look at the games on the zx spectrum it's all grid kind of based games where it's like oh that's a yellow square so say it's a platformer all the platforms would line up to these eight by eight squares the enemies would line up so they're always on that eight by eight line so that the colors wouldn't mix and clash and so you're absolutely right you have to play to the strengths of 
the consoles and play to the strengths of the technology. And so people will look at this and go, oh, okay, there's focus, just like your binoculars. That's a perfect application. You know, how do we how do we make this a feature of this piece? Yeah. Or, you know, opening windows or, I don't know, some sort of shooting gallery game with a light gun, right? You move the light gun over and it, and it, and it shows does it. a high resolution of the enemy there, 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 there in these five different positions, right? It's like, oh, somebody pops up there. And the rest of, you know, the saloon is in low res on the sides. But when you move your, your gun over top, it's high res. Yeah, things like that. It's it's Yeah, rather than trying to sort of make it imitate something that because you know of yeah. course there's we, we have the unreal engine right like you know <laughs> what i mean right. that we have but how do we take this own unique interesting way of rendering 3d and and make this a feature of a, of a game and think of what kind of game mechanics can arise through this sort and, of like and a space game is great because if you look at the stars when i'm not focused on them if they're moving you won't notice they're just play field pixels they're, they're just zooming by you and then you're, you're moving your cursor over the ships to shoot them and you're going to be focused on the ships. So a space game, I think, is really, really oh, good yeah. application for this because most of the rest of it is fine re low resolution. So you just have to think in that mindset. What low resolution background non-focus things would not be distracting for this type of game? Yeah, and, we, and when you have this sort of focus, what are some sort of like elements and and like uh things in life or things that have this quality to them where an element's focused and outside of outside of it is out of focus and how can you apply that to a story or a or a game you know yeah this is uh this one's yeah you said about 32 this is 38 so it's very small it's for what it's doing the night kind of game is has some potential Yes, yes, a, uh, a sneaky game like with binoculars, or you're, you're yeah. looking for things in the dark, or like, or like there's like a uh, like the side of a building, and there's like all these oh, windows, windows. Oh, and that's you perfect. and you like move from place to place, and like things will sort of shift and change, and you need to find sniper game. like sniper, sniper game, game is perfect because buildings, low resolution buildings, fine, they're square. They, they they work really well with playfield because they're square and maybe you see a, a light go on in a window yeah. and then you move your your scope over to the window you're, and then you could see the person or it's like walking you're, you're around. a private detective taking photos and you have to like they, they, rather than shooting like can you get like yes. a thing and you have to capture the evidence and things are moving so as yep. you move around i don't know you're driving in your car down the street and and you've got the camera you go to the side take pictures yeah there's it's so many possibilities potential for point of view which is really fascinating yes a uh, splinter cell games. with night vision goggles that's right that would be fascinating as well yeah so there you go so i wonder if you could have a glimpse um, at the future of 2600 3d games you might be really pushing the bounds of it but also be interesting to have a section that's like this and then another section that's much more classic right yes. so you so you're so not you can move into this mode and yeah then move back out of and it. there could be like a level that's Ooh. like this and then another level that's more like just a classic platformer like it doesn't have to all be this there's a lot yes. of interesting potential that's smart that's smart because some things would be serviced serviceable better in this traditional way of displaying graphics and then you can switch to this for if you want to the, the the scene that you need to do the action in because i could imagine a world where this is a little bit hard to be in for the entirety of a thing and maybe Might having a be. reprieve or a break it depends on how you handle it though but yeah. especially with this sort of like focus out of focus elements yeah so there you go it, this is game changing this opens up a whole new world um obviously it uses the arm chip for doing all of this um but it would be nothing without the um kernels that zach attack made and andrew enhanced um they worked on together um it, the atari 2600 is still outputting this with uh with with its TIA chip. That's right. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, rainy night driver, windshield oh, view, where only the yeah. center is high res and the edges are blurred by water. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wipes the rain away. Classic duck hunt I mean, <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, you could do duck hunt. There's so many, so many things you can do. Um, okay, so let's get into the first game. Switch over the cartridge here. Hi, cat. You're being very calm. Didn't have to 
kick you out. But your head is like right where I need to sit. Yeah, buddy. Uh, Star Fox for 2600. I'm going to sell heat sinks for the 2600. Yeah, overheating TIAs. So the first game we're going to be playing is Je Ate. Oh, Je Ate. Je I did look it up and to get some web pages to pronounce it for, for me. Um, it's obviously Portuguese. I do not speak Portuguese. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't speak Portuguese either. No? Okay. So we showed a sneak preview of this game during the 6th Annual Atari Homebrew Awards back in February. Um, but now it is available uh, for pre-order, and we get to show it first here. So I'm very excited. Um, so let me show you the... Um, I'll give you this. Ooh, okay. The order page for it. It's on pre-order right now. And it will be uh, shipping on... I do have it here. Uh, August 5th. So in less than a month. Uh, the game is almost finished. He sent me this up-to-date version today. Oh, we need to translate this to English. There we go. It's a bee native to the Atlantic forest and it's and must fulfill its duty to pollinate the flowers, collect the pollen and nectar to feed the hive. During the mission, some enemies will appear. The spiders who will hang onto the web. The lemon bees who will assail the hive and also the great spider, the queen. Ooh, the great spider. Stopped. Okay. So it is 30, 350... Uh, ours. $350,000, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a gonna, big ask. But. You're going to need... Uh, je you, can, you can buy a Porsche or... Uh, um, no. That's right. <laughs> so it's a small, it's the social stingless bee. Oh, interesting. So you can see it right there. Wow. This is the Wikipedia page for it. Uh, found in Mexico, Central, and South America. So we don't have these in Canada or in the U.S., Maybe in very, very, very South Maybe US. Maybe South, who knows, yeah. Probably there must be a little bit. Maybe. But. Depends on where in Mexico. Maybe it's really South Mexico. It is known by its variety of names in different regions. There it is. There we go. Oh. Jataye. Jataye. Uh, and a whole bunch of other names. Tons of names. Uh, a subspecies occupies different areas in South America and has slightly different coloration. A small bee and builds unobtrusive nests, allowing them to thrive in urban areas. It also produces large amounts of honey and is frequently kept in wooden hives. Uh, the hives are often overlooked, and since the bee lacks a stinger, it is not seen as a threat to humans. Interesting. Yeah, so very uh, unique bee there. And it's got a very long body. Now, now this game is coming with a very cool box. And this is quite possibly... A, let's see if I can, that's probably good, actually. Yeah, that's pretty damn cool, man. It is super cool box. Let me just turn down the volume here. 65 US. Oh, yeah. 65. So check, check out this box. Shut the A, shut the I A, B, and there's a B on the front. That's beautiful. Now wait for it. Oh, the bee comes off. Hey, it's magnetic, magnetic bee. That's a smart that is way to so do it. cute. Oh, oh it's a key. And it's a lock. Oh my god. It's a very cool box. That's JT. 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 So it's got uh, a secret way to open it. And he's, he doesn't have the cartridge yet. That's that's one of his uh, other games. Oh, and it lifts up to reveal the the manual. That's, that's a, I mean, that is class. That's a 10 out of 10 box, right? Oh, like, I don't know if it gets better than that, man. And it's specifically catered towards, like, the content of the, of the piece. Yeah, that is such a sweet box. And if that's only 65, you're getting a pretty good deal. Now, here's some of the bees in action. Oh, let me... Look how small they are, That's, man. Yeah, super small bees and super small hive they've got in there. I guess it's in the... Yeah, especially when he pulls the camera back, the you can really oh, super see, tiny. like... Some, said each time. some baby bees. <laughs> some very tiny baby bees. Apparently, they make tons and tons and tons of honey. Wow. 
that is really cool. So that those were sent over um, to me by Fernando's to show off the case and show off the bees. So the game's almost finished. It's obviously going to be ready for shipping. Um, and it's also the, the name of a municipality in the southern uh, Go Goya state in Brazil. The J J J I can't say it, man. Uh, JT. 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 How about that? JT. Um, I'm going to actually copy that so I can pronounce it again. Because that's a good way. J T. J T. Um, so it says, this is my new game, JT the B. And that makes more sense because it rhymes. JT the B. Um, and you can also contact Marcus um, for international outside of Brazil sales. Oh, nope. Not GT. GT. Oh, we won't get it right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So let's boot up the game and I will uh, read out the instructions as we go. Sounds good. I feel like there'll be something to do with bees. Yeah, a little something bit. To something to do with, with honey. Bees. Let's go to today's day. Is that a... That's what was, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Down. Load her up. Game. We've got some music here. So we've got some different game selections, but we'll stay on zero for now. This is a, cla a famous classical song. I don't know which song it is. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I, I knew it as well, but I don't know the name of it. I feel like it's a Beethoven or Bach. I could be wrong. Someone in the chat, let yeah. us know. I, this is definitely a famous classical song. Definitely. I know I played this in band class back in the day, but... Fernando, what's the name of the song? I cannot remember. <laughs> That's okay. It's cool to hear. I love that little detail of just adding in some classic music into yes. translated through and this. There's uh, a good example of the 48 um, pixel... Uh, in use, oh, 48 yeah. pixels in use for a title screen. The Vivaldi. Vivaldi. Ah, spring from the four seasons. There yes. we go. Yes, oh. Two people filled it in. Yes, Vivaldi. So you're uh, JT the bee, a part of a na species a species native to Mate Atlantica, Brazil. Your, your duty is to pollinate flowers, collect pollen and nectar to feed the hive. During your mission, some enemies will appear. Oh, such no. Such as a small spiders which hang from their web. Lemon bees, which attack the hive, and also large Wait, spider. Other bees are attacking us. Yeah, you think there'd be some unity amongst the bees, but it's civil no war honor, out here. With no the honor bees, among man. bees. Oh, um, large spring spi for the bees. Spring oh, for the bees. Oh, nice. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And large spider that needs to be stopped. On the title screen, you must be stopped. You can choose the game mode by moving the joystick up. So Ooh. game zero, one, or two. Okay, we'll start with game zero. Let's start with zero. In game zero, your flight is continuous. Once a direction has been given to the joystick, you will continue to fly according to the given new direction. The fire button makes you accelerate. Okay. Uh, in game one, your flight is controlled with the joystick, but only while a direction is pressed. The fire button does again speed you up, so game one is actually easier. Uh, game two is a mode for two players. We'll play that in a bit. Uh, the object objective is to pollinate ten flowers before the other player, so a little bit different of a game. So it takes one part of the game and makes it a two-player. So in mode zero, at the bottom of the screen, lives are represented by squares. On the left, uh, the amount of nectar and pollen collected appears. On the screen, when there is a frame, you won't be able to touch the edges. As the flowers are pollinated, leaves appear on the screen and you have to avoid them. Um, after pollinated or the loss of life, you'll have a few moments of invincibility. Oh. Use them to your advantage. If only that were true in life. I know. Sometimes it'll be necessary to study which flower to pollinate and which to leave behind, as this may influence the success of your endeavor. After a few pollinations, the screen will indicate that you can leave the scenario for the next phase. If all your lives are lost, you can continue, but your score will be reset. Okay, go for it. There's your B. You're invulnerable now. Continuous flight in game zero. What do I do? I go towards Just touch it? it and get out of the way. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. There you go. Now that's a danger now. Ah! So you don't touch them. How do I like... Do I, oh, did you see that? <laughs> there you go. So you got four so far. That one's going to be tough. Don't touch the sides either. Ah! Gets harder and harder. 
Oh, do I get a bit of an whoa, 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 Oh, you can leave it. Another one will appear, though. Okay, okay. Come We're going to leave that. We're going to leave that. Leave that for another day? Oh, no! Oh, you went back! I no. didn't. I actually didn't mean to. Oh, leave that. No! You can continue. Oh. I mean, you didn't make it past the first level. Oh, but. it's hard just being a little bee. It is. I don't oh, think I many speed up. 2600 games have invincibility frames. Not so many. as soon as I acquire one, I have invincibility for right? like yeah, one so that and I don't like seconds. fly through it. Yes, yeah, so you want to keep moving in the same direction after you touch it because that's your best bet. Sometimes it's sort of oh nice. Uh oh, nice for oh, oh, do you see that? It's my joystick. Yes. Oh, that joystick does have bounce, so you have to keep in control of the joystick for games that. Oh no. Yeah, I can't think of another. Uh oh. There must be other 26. Now you can get out of here. Oh. oh I almost made it. It's, it's tough just being a little bee out here. I'll let you guys know that. A great wing animation, too. Oh, it's so good. Good variety of flowers. Very nice flowers. It almost feels like there's like. Do I have a time limit? Uh, no. Because it seems you to can me stay that calm like. Mom, and you can go after the flowers you, you see want. See that? What? Just sometimes it just it just like sends me. It's a bouncy joystick, so you have to watch the watch the bounce on it. Oh, I wouldn't get that one. <laughs> I feel like that's you could, a, but it's hard. That's what they call a jebate, is what yeah, that is. That's a big, oh, oh, oh you're flying on the edge, man! Killing yourself flying on the edge. Oh, whoa! Yeah. Oh, so close! No. Oh. Oh. oh my god. Oh, okay, you can get out of there. It's, Go all, down. it's all easier said Go than down. done. Go down. Down. You don't need any more. Oh, do I just get out of it now? Yeah, get down. There you go. So now you're hey. flying to your hive. Now you have to go... Say uh, hi to... Inside the eye. Uh, yep. Don't hit your sides. You must find other... Uh, jeté... I don't know what Give me my friends. To, to process I the I feel nectar. like this is what I gotta do. Yep. And then finally deposit in the wax pot. Okay. I got an extra life, though, so oh, we're back. Good. And so the cycle continues with variations each stage. No. At some point, the hive may be attacked by lemon bees. Ooh, uh -oh. this, this stuff's moving now? Good God. It may be harder or easier. And the objective would be to defend the entrance. So you're not there yet, but there's a, a uh -oh. phase where you have to uh -oh. defend the entrance to your hive. I'm so scared. This is brutal. Yeah, the bee and flower animations are quite good. The, uh, uh, the growing the flowers. Because it's not just no, like no, revealing no, the flower. No, it's like no. a different frames of animation uh, of the uh, flower. Uh, uh, oh, that's a dangerous spot. Go for it. Uh, uh, Ooh, don't follow uh, the... Uh, uh, hey, you're, go. Uh, down. Uh, down. 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 You can get out of there. Oh, I can get out of here. I don't need yeah. to go. Okay. 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 Jesus. Freaking me out, man. Ooh, Freaking me out. Not, it's easier said than done. It's hard being a little bee out here. It's a tough job. That's why there's so many of them. Yeah, there's so a real... A lot of them don't make it. Oh, unfortunately. I always thought the aliens and, like, bees have a real connection, you know? Oh, yeah. Just the number of them. Those friggin'... Oh, defend! Whoa! That's, that's what you need to Whoa, do. Whoa, do I gotta do... You need to do that. You gotta take them down. Oh, I block it? Okay. I'm like a goalie. Yep, so that is the lemon bees. Oh! Good job. I love how... Lemon... Whoa, whoa, no changes. <laughs> So what's going on? Oh, no! Got in. Do I lose? Yeah, I lose. No, oh, I want to win. No! No! You missed him. No, oh, you missed no! Him. It's getting in your hive, stealing your honey, man! You got it. Okay. You made it. Uh-oh. 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 Okay. Is it moving? No, it's not. Yeah, there's three... There Actually, there's four different stages. Uh, we haven't got to the last stage where you are... Um, what is this? Oh, oh my oh, god! Oh, there's the spider. Okay, okay. <laughs> Avoid okay. that spider. I, uh, okay, this I would is. Stay low on the screen if you can, because the spiders come down from above. That's a good point. That's a great point. Okay, we need this invincibility, or else we're Al, screwed. You definitely missed something. Oh, you missed the spider, dude. Some POC. Some POC. <laughs> Pretty epic POC. Some open. 3D. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. I flown to the right. Trying to do some evasion. Some amazing real-time 3D yes, let's get out of renderings here. on the 2600. Okay, so what's happening next? I gotta s collect my bees. Yep. Say hi to your bee friends. We're and deposit here. your honey. Party time for kittens. Oh, party, party time! time. 
Oh. Did you see that? That was the controller. The that wasn't me. Hold the... Oh, oh, it's over. Okay, okay, let's do the the catnip. For the kittens. Guess what? We'll go back to the game in a second. It's time to get high. It's time to get, it's time to get lit. It's time to... What are, they, what, what are the other terms for, for this? Um, bla blazed. Oh, it's time to blaze. Time to blaze. Now, Atari, it's time to... I'm going to offer this to the kitten as well, but kittens don't usually care about catnip until they're like six months old. That's what happened with Sprite. Same mm. with Atari, too. They just want to smell that. Is it yummy? Is it yummy for you? No. He's like, I don't know what that is. There you go. He's not mature enough yet for drugs, it. Drugs are, aren't drugs for are kids. Drugs are bad kids. They're not for... <laughs> not good for kids. There you go. He's investigating because Atari's like, yum, 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 yum. What do you have? Give me some of it. Give me some of it. He's sniffing it. He's sniffing it. Winners don't do drugs. They <laughs> sell them. They make a profit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Cat drugs. Cute babies. They are cute. Oh, look at that. Happy cats. Oh. Are you making friends? Sid is like licking it up. Now, we'll know if it actually affects him, because he might be just eating it because it's like, oh, oh it's food. I think it's going to affect him. We'll see. So if he starts cleaning obsessively or rolling around, right now he's like, stop licking me, He Atari. starts doing, um, you know, $60 Uber Eats orders. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yep. We know there's... And that's just for a drink. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Are you rolling around or are you just laying down? He finds himself at Burger King at 3 a.m., there you go. That's right. Did it work on you, Sid? Oh, he's rolling around. It might have actually affected him. Oh, he's he's getting into it young. Want some more? He's going back for more. This is ethical, right? It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. These plants grow naturally in the wild. Oh, yeah. He's tipping it over. Oh, dude, he's... Oh, he's on. He's getting lost in the sauce. Sid! <laughs> he is. No, Sid. Sid! Too young! He had his whole life ahead of him. <laughs> Those are bad. Okay. Those are bad, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you for following Radical We Weaver. did, and you guys hooked That's Sid. That's not us. It's It was uh, Zeptari 1. Dude, Zeptari. Oh, little look did what you, you know. did. You corrupted this little baby, Sid. Like Sid oh, look. Is... oh, yeah, he's on the sauce. Yep. 420 cat. Look at this. Look oh, at this. He's, oh, he's tipping it on oh, the floor. Oh, he's losing it. Oh, oh look, he's spinning oh. on the floor. He's, he's, he's tipping just... it all over his face. He's oh, dumping it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Okay. Suddenly, the whole what bell the... thing makes sense to Sid. Oh, the bell. I get it now. I, see I understand. It all. He's about to invent Apple. He's <laughs> about to. Uh, a phone for cats. <laughs> Imagine the iPod combined with the phone. <laughs> oh, he's he is loving it. Oh my god. Over okay. here, come in the central okay, area. Sid. Jokes Sid. on you. I'm a dog guy. Is that Atari? Oh, Sid I see. Kid. He wants more Atari. They don't hate mints either. You can give them pineapple mints or whatever. They don't just get as stoned. Yeah, because these this is related to mint. Um, oh really yeah if you smell it oh my god <laughs> if you smell the plant and rub it it's like oh this is mint sid you're covered He's you're covered in the juice covered. oh covered. baby he looks so small on the on the camera oh, he's there a, he's a little he kitten. is tiny that's what he is he's oh just a little my kitten. goodness start them off early gotta keep the mentos away from the kittens that's why atari was licking him yeah atari is gonna like go over and just start <laughs> okay it's my turn Unless you want to give it another go? No, you can go ahead. Yeah? Okay. Oh, I can just see he's unhinged already. Oh, he's, like... he's losing it. Oh, continue. Okay, we'll continue. We'll do the the higher levels. Oh, my God. That was pathetic. That's all good. Ooh, just touched it. Okay. Flower time. Oh, and spider time, too. This is a higher level. Uh-oh. I see some bad behavior. Yeah. It's just the Velcro, though. Uh, that's what Sprite went after all the time, it's too. It's the beginning. Yeah, beginning of the badness. No, he gave up. Good. 
Oh, spider. spiders! Goodbye, spider. Very nice, and the spider kind of phases in too. Oh, 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 oh. Into the spider verse we go. Oh, I gotta get out of here. Spiders might come. Oh, just Nick. Oh, there we go. Go to the Aldevia. Get to the chopper. Ah. Oh, God. Good stuff. Oh, no. Ah, get out of ah, here. Get ah, out of ah, here. Run. Let's see if we can make it to the boss. But when you continue, you start from zero points. So it doesn't really help because you can accumulate more points starting on an easier level, I'm sure. Yeah, that's the thing. But also, it's nice to have oh, that yeah. continue aspect so you can just see you know, the higher you levels. Can, like... Oh, defend. Lemon bees are attacking. No lemon bees. Right, this character is really good. This main character bee. Oh, yeah. Really like a cool animation. Helicopter bee. And you do see it in much like real life these other bees are significantly bigger yes yeah, these are tiny here, tiny bees that you're playing so the size is uh very appropriate oh so they're not moving anymore that's good it's actually easier when they don't move oh my hey, goodness buddy. are you high oh jeez, spider scared me oh how was that experience that's his first time having cat sounds my guy you guys saw it here first Last time he was not interested, we tried. Oh, different flower. It's a round flower. Oh, the screen's very full. Ah, spiders. They don't quite go to the bottom, so you're kind of safe down here. Yeah, bottom is the place to sort of camp. Jesus. Ah, I'll stay here. Nice spider webs. It's, yeah, also I do, I think what's a challenge of this game is your your character is quite large. You know, and, and In so comparison to the... Like what you're navigating through. You know? Yeah, so you can really box yourself in a corner. Like I think navigating that and yeah. actually being deliberate. Like I do think a real tactic to this game is like making sure Ow. that you're managing the play field because yes. you can easily like create a labyrinth. Because here's perfect spot, That's right? A great but one, yeah. if you think about it, it's almost like if something is like middle of the. There's just certain spots that don't make sense. Like that's but not that's a that's perfect a good spot. One. That one's a this good one's one. doable as well, but yeah, it's like there's it's just getting this... bad. It's getting real bad. Ah, ah. Okay, okay. Oof. The bottom is safe. Did you try to land? It? Okay, oh, good. Let's get out of out. here. Let's see if we can make it to the boss. I only have one life left. Luckily, we can continue, which is nice. Yeah, that's a nice option. Because maybe you're not great at it. Maybe you want to see the higher levels. Hey, some blue um, flaws but you won't like make that. the yeah you need to score, score. oh no uh oh I mean oh, this looks like a boss mark. if I've ever seen one oh it's the big spider oh no oh no stay away okay what do I do what do I do do we do we can we shoot oh what is happening oh he's shooting oh. webs oh my god what do that we do? is one of the oh Oh, do we, we have yep. weapons yeah you have to collect the weapons collect a gun and yeah. shoot it right down the middle oh Wow, Headshot. this is one of the biggest bosses I've ever seen on the 2600. Full screen, top to bottom. Oh, cool. When you kind of collect it, it's sort of like, um, is attached to you. Yes. That's really nice little, little, oh. little kind of... Oh, you uh... can shoot through the webs. Okay, that's good to know. Damn it. Oh, no. One life left. Okay, you got oh, this. You I got this. Extra life. Got him. That's a giant spider, man. Oh, oh. Some she lob right here, man. Ooh, it's very dangerous being close to him. Boop, boop. Oh, oh, damn it. It's that accuracy. Yeah. Oh, you can shoot them when they get close. It's dangerous when they're. Damn it. Uh oh. That's okay. That's okay. Just patience. Whoa! Patience is the whoa, only, whoa! 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 It's the only way out is to be patient. Get one more. Oh, oh, look, all celebration the time. Hey, did we win? Did we win? Yep. Vivaldi. Oh, Vivaldi is playing. Thank you. We're going back in the hive. You protected us from the spiders. Let's see. Defend the hive from the queen spider by throwing wax at its weak point. The bottom right bar indicates the enemy's energy. After defeating the spider, a different surprise will happen each cycle. <sighs> Oh, so like different animations. Oh, look, we oh, got some flowers. flowers. Are... Wow. That's awesome. Oh, open? It's open. Can I not just 
Oh my god. Whoa. Whoa. I think things is... just popped off, man. Whoa. <laughs> I was no. waiting for it to pop off. And this is... I think it just did. It's... Yeah. The game is still evolving. Oh, whoa, okay. whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, this illusion of safety we had is How gone. How do I know when oh, you the just level's gotta... done? Can I just... No, I can't get out yet. Oh, you'll oh, know. Jeez. Yeah, I bet I will. <laughs> like, something will change. Oh my god. Maybe there'll be a door will appear? Oh. Maybe. Oh my god, this is a lot harder to navigate. Whoa, 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 whoa. Also, I have a question. Yeah. It's for you and the chat. Oh, jeez. Oof. Buddy of mine the other day was like, I was telling him about the show. <laughs> He's like, what? And then, what? You and do then, what? And then he asked me a, a question that I was like, that's actually a good question. He said, oh, I so like... It. What are like the best Atari games? He's like, like what were, what are the like, what Old would be school? the, and I, and I was like, um, like because I play homebrew, I was like, I don't oh. know, but like what would be like, you know how like you you could do like a Mount Rushmore, like not to oh. not to like make a like I don't want a top ten list, but like just naming what Some are like ones? if I if if someone were to ask me again, Aaron, what are the best Atari games? I had to, you'd be like, I forget. I, uh, I said Galaga. Up. Not doesn't exist. Okay, th then th <laughs> see, this is how little I understand about this. But I was curious. Yeah. What are I guess like would Hero be up there? Yeah, people love Hero. So Hero. It's a really innovative, unique, great, beautiful game looking, the... challenging game. Um, you could pretty much name game just about any Activision game, and you'd be safe. Yeah, what would be like just chat as well? Like, what are the ones that like you'd say like are would be? I don't want like a like a list necessarily that's like okay. hierarchical, but like just throwing out like what are the ones? Adventure. Yeah, that's that's up there. It doesn't look like much. Pressure cooker. Pressure cooker. That's a good one. I mean, it's not my favorite, but it's very very innovative. Has a lot of things going for it. Uh, Montezuma's Revenge, I think, is one of the most advanced games, in my opinion. Demon Attack, someone said. Demon Attack's very good. Um, Spider Fighter is one of my favorites. It's such a good shooter. So crazy. What was the first one that you played? Like, what was out of your first memory? Like, what were some of the first Atari games you encountered? Combat. <laughs> Combat? Because that's the one that shipped with the system. Yars Revenge? Yars Revenge is very good. High action. With the 2600, we're talking, right? I think yeah, so, just yeah. 2600. Because I was like, I need to, I need, Dig Dug? Oh, I even, River Raid? See, I even know Dig some of Dig Dug is very good. Very good translation from the arcade. River Raid is awesome. Um, keeps you very busy. What would be, like, some of the, w during that era, does anyone know, like, what were some of the most high-selling, like, popular ones? Not that popularity is a sign of good, but I'm very curious. Frogger, Star Path? Frogger's very good. Um, I mean, the high-selling ones were E.T., um, Pac-Man, um... You said Moonsweeper, Warlords? Those are Warlords some... is killer multiplayer. Pitfall, Kaboom? Pitfall, Pitfall 2. Kaboom is a high-intensity game. Um, paddle game. These are all excellent, excellent um, suggestions. Oh, yeah, okay, good. Space Invaders sold a yep. lot. Yep, Space Invaders because makes... um, Asteroids sold a lot as well because oh. people were like really one of the arcade hits of that era. Battle Zone is surprisingly good. Frostbite, dude. Frostbite's awesome. <laughs> the handling, joystick handling and Frostbite is second to none. It is so smooth. Wow. Um, there's so many good games. There's a lot. Yeah, because I know, like, so little about, like, because I just do this. I don't actually <laughs> know that much about... No, because we don't play original, because there's a billion channels that play original Atari 2600 games. A billion. Uh, Rod Kessler said my mom could play Casino for hours casino. when everyone else was sleeping. <laughs> and then casino. Halloween is another one someone mentioned. Um, it's it's got some stuff going for it. Halloween, yep. Yeah got some coolness i wouldn't say it's uh on the top 10 list of many people's uh, one because it's super rare super super rare um oh oh no damn it i ran it's so sad when he falls because i accidentally was pressing to the left solaris if you read the manual solaris is graphically impressive very very gra graphically impressive yeah I, I would need to read the manual <laughs> I've heard that with E.T. as well, that E.T. is yes. great if you read the manual. It's, it's, it's a good RPG. It's a good light RPG because it was made in quite a hurry. So it's not doesn't have a lot of depth to it, but uh, the pits do. No. Um, but it is a good it is a good game. It has lots of lots of good options on it. But people just 
dismiss it because they don't read the manual. And now apparently Ajitai the Bee, that's right, is the, yeah, the well, new Mount a, Rushmore yeah, of... That's right. It's not, an it's not in the original run of games. It's a homebrew. It's brand new. But it is, it is very good at the variety of levels that you get to play. There's four distinct uh, levels. I mean, this one's this one's fairly easy, but it is a different level. You do have well, to navigate easy, easy for you, you know. I stuff. I'm trying, I'm trying to figure maze. out this the, <laughs> the controls to sort of like land them, you know. And has a boss level, and this one has many varieties too, with the um, the different the spiders, the different moving um, flower. I can't remember what they said they turns into sunflower. Sunflowers. But the invinci temporary invincibility, that is quite something that you don't see in a lot of 2600 games. So, James, out of the original Atari games, which one would you say you personally played the most? Back in the, oh geez, back in the day? Yeah. I played a lot of Phoenix. Phoenix? Uh, it's a shooter, uh, a fixed shooter. That means you are fixed to one axis. Damn it. And... You shoot the things, and they evolve, and there's different levels to it, and there's different types of enemies that uh, swoop down. Um, and then there's a, a boss enemy ship that's really cool. Ah, ah, oh. I was going to die. Okay, let's play the two-player. Okay, let's do it. Oh, messy cats. Okay, so go no to continue. Oh, oh no. Uh, now oh, I want to continue. Oh, oh, oh look at this. No, I oh, want to continue. I want to go back. Death of the bee. <laughs> no. The flowers are slowly growing. Okay. Oh, do we have to reset? Oh, first button. First button. Other one. No. Oh, not couch compliant. Boo. Boom. boom. Number two. Do Let's not, do it. Uh, yeah. Number two. Okay. I'm. Whoa. What? Oh, my God. What is. Wow. That is that something. Oh uh, wow, that what is happens, smart. But it just I, slows me down. It doesn't seem yeah, it doesn't really Which is imperative in uh, a game where you're both competing for the same uh, flowers. It's a game of oh. competition. I'm just I haven't even near I haven't you. even seen one that appear. Uh, well you're kicking my ass. I don't know about that. Six to two. Seven to two. Because I didn't know what the hell was going on at first. No! Mine! Oh, why are you faster? I'm holding down the button. Oh, you! <laughs> Dude, That's I shouldn't have why. told you. I shouldn't have told you. No! Oh, no. Tactics. Yeah, you're slightly fat. I forgot that from the instructions. I didn't think it would apply to here, because then you just... You would always hold down. <gasps> First place medal! First place. <laughs> Clip that why you faster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's to 10? Or Okay, press again. Okay. No. No, that's it. Not your game. Is your not game couch is compliant. not couch. Compliant. Okay, game two again. And I have a fighting chance this time, maybe. Yeah. Best. It's all about where it spawns, too, though. That's the thing, right? Like, very it's random. Just like... uh, I'm going to stay on the opposite side of you. Because that gives me a fighting chance. Ah, oh, ran into me. I wouldn't have got it anyway. Damn it. Ah! Oh, I just happened to be on top of it. See, that's the thing. There's a real RNG element to this. Huge. Oh, my God. The only thing you can There's do no is... reason not to hold down that button, too. That nope. is like, there's literally no, no reason. reason. Unless you're, like, playing against somebody who's really good and you want to even the playing field, maybe. Yeah. That would be a good way to provide a handicap. No! Oh, just got it. Is it to 10? I'm guessing it's, it's to 10. 10. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, it's just, it's tough because sometimes you're just like, on the right if side. it spawns. Damn it. But if I got, that, the... I got stuck in my head <laughs> now, those friggin' classics. Oh, one, there we go. Number one. Come on, James, hit the bell. <laughs> treat time. Yeah, it is a treat time game. I don't want any of those treats, though. Very cool. Wow, okay. 
That's uh, that's a very game has got a lot going on. I love also all the different screens and the multiple different like um, kind of things that are going on. Yes, there's a lot of variety to the game, and that's what you want. Um, so this is for pre-order now. It'll be shipping on the 5th of August. It is made by uh, Bitnamic Software and Fernando Rodriguez Salvio, who also made That's Alien right. Holocaust 1 and 2. Critical information as well. Don't yes. don't make the mistake. 350 is not 350. Warning. Warning. American, it's... <laughs> That's right. It's a different... It's a different, if it's a different Treat thing. Ball Treat ball. Loose. Treat ball is loose. Now... This cat has a fighting chance to play with the treat ball if you want to grab the arena. Because Atari can hit hit it out the, of the ball and the, this guy will get it. The Thunderdome. Yes, the cat Thunderdome. Two two men enter, one man leaves. Two cats enter. <laughs> okay, kitties. Let's close this up. A Someone bit. quoted 65 USD, exactly. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And shipping is quite expensive from and to Brazil. So I understand the extra costs are quite. Oh, bad. definitely. But that could that could be the difference between you getting it or not if you didn't if you didn't catch that critical detail. And and <laughs> and also, if you looked at the box, that is a deluxe box. Oh, I yeah. don't think I've seen a more elaborate twenty six hundred game box in my life. Yeah, like I feel like the the margins for that is <laughs> Ooh, slim. Okay, come on, sit. No, no more, no more, no more drugs. Come on, get the RI and the ball. There you go. Learn from your brother. You really see how tiny he is? In oh yeah, in comparison to Tron like Tronkers here. We're going to open it up a little bit more for the cats. There we go. Oh, oh, Sid stole it. Stolen. Stolen Valor? Yeah, Stolen Valor. Thank you, Ka Gamma Dev. Oh, Tar's taking it out of the arena. Of course he is. He's, He's like, get... nope, this is mine. This is mine. No, no. <laughs> Most Which elaborate one? until the Hellraiser 2600 games comes with the Lament co Configuration. Right, is that what it's man. called? The Lament? I missed a new cat. That's yes, right. Yes, there is a new well, cat. Well, meet he's... Sid. Sid, the destroyer. Sid Vicious. He's, Sid he's vicious. high out of his mind right now. He, he tried catnip for the first time. Yep. Thanks to you, chat. That's right, chat. Thanks to you. Well, you got to push it around. Push it around. Got to learn. There you go. There you go. Oh, using the tactic Sprite did with his nose. Sprite was like... <laughs> Soccer ball player. Um, so, let's look up what's going on for the next one. The next game we're going to be playing is Stellar Drive Mars. We have played this on the show, but this is an exclusive final version of the game. Um, oh, and also uh, the B game. Uh, there is a demo available. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was posted before the show, so it is available in the Atari Age forums. So you can download and play. I'm not sure what the limitation on the demo is, but uh, you can find you can that out. And discover that for yourselves That's and right. report back. Let us know. So this game is made by uh, Mirsed Saralika, uh, Kiki PDPH. Uh, this is first posted about February 16th, 2024. This build is from July 9th, a couple days ago. 32k game, same person who made Karamujo, and Flap Ninja, and Jutland Skies, and Meow and Meow 2. Yeah. Well, thank you for making the game. It's so yes, awesome. Yes, Fernando, it it's is so wonderful fun. to have. Yeah, great to see. I, I love our main character. And oh, great graphics. I enjoyed the two-player component as well. It's yeah. so much good functionality like nice. with, the, with the different options. And the box... The packaging is killer. I think you're definitely a runner-up. I think you're in, for <laughs> you're in contention for the award. I, I'm almost certain you're probably going to get nominated for that box. This feels like a... And you, got, <laughs> you get my nomination. It means nothing, but you I get I don't know it. how the Brazilians keep keep doing it with their boxes. They they are always high up with their boxes, yeah. and they get nominated almost all the other time. All the time. The one variation has another controller option. Oh, yeah, we didn't show that. Um, but it just doesn't move when you... Like, it's not continuous movement. So people can 
Uh, find that out. So I'm gonna guess the final, right? The first one. Well, shall we switch away from the cats? We'll go small with the cats. And let me change the cartridge. Um, yes, the finals. This is the final version of the game. Not the final final. Not the final. Not the final. No, it is the final. <laughs> That's like the classic when you export a video from Final like, Final. Premiere. For sure, final. But, uh, trust final me, this one's two. final. Yeah. Um, how long did it take from inception to completion? Six months. That's pretty good. That's Sid, really, really good. Sid Precious. Oh. Um, okay, load it up. Stellar Drive Mars by Kiki. Ooh. 2024. So, in the distant future, Mars has become... Got the manual here. Mars has become the center of the mining colonies. The workers have rebelled against the corporation oh. exploiting them. Down with the man. Take that. You are a leader of the rebellion, tasked with delivering crucial information to the rebels. You drive along orbital roads, carrying vital information through these dangerous routes, avoiding obstacles and security systems. <laughs> Sid's just like attacking Atari while Atari's trying to get treats. Come on, Sid, get in the game. Get those treats. He doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> he doesn't. He's trying to just figure like... it out. He's like... Oh, oh, oh. Says the stream keeps interrupting here. Is that happening for everyone? Just want to double check. No drop frames. No frames missed. It's all good here. Reload, Al. Um, the goal of the game is to safely deliver the information to the rebels, uh, <sighs> helping them in their fight for better working conditions. I'm a fan. If you succeed... You become a hero of oh, Mars. I want to become a hero of Mars. Objective, drive your vehicle, jumping and avoiding obstacles on orbital roads. Jump from one road to another over broken roads. Uh, controls, left, right, joystick, forward, back, joystick, forward, back. Tricks. Hold on, let me just... Forward, back, left. Right. Okay, I think okay. I got it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tricks, long jump, pull the joystick back, jump, then push the joystick forward in midair. Okay. So you can kind of go forward more when moving. Short jump, pull the joystick forward, jump, then pull the joystick back in midair. So you control, you can control yourself in air, in essence. Uh, gameplay, the game has 20 levels. You can continue from the current level if you die with unlimited retries as long as the bar is not empty. If the bar depletes to zero, you return to the first phase of the level. If you don't want to continue, let the timer run out. Good luck on your mission to deliver crucial information, become the hero of Mars. So there's a bunch of obstacles. Get your ass to Mars is what Gamma Dev says. There's a wall. You can't okay. get through that. You have to jump. There's out a of moving the way. wall. God damn it. Yep. A popping wall. Oh, dude, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of a <laughs> popping wall. wall, man. Is walls weird. are popping. It's time to. There's a bus. There's a, f a fireball vehicle. <laughs> there's a fireball. Speed bump. You have to jump over those. Okay. You can't jump over the walls. You can't jump over those. You think you either. could drive over a speed bump, but I guess if you do no. it with at certain speed, right? Moving speed bump, popping speed Dude, bump. I'm, I'm a fan of the popping <laughs> speed Pop bump. Popping speed bump and a finish line. You'll know that. A flag marks the end of the level. Must cross well on the road, not in a jump. That's not true. I've jumped over it. I jump over it every time because it's fun. Okay. If you jump and miss the road after the flag, it doesn't count and you die. Interesting. If you jump and miss the road, ah. Thank, uh, game creator, package design, uh, Mirsad, thanks to James O'Brien and Geraldo. So I did oh. extensive testing on this game. It is a fun game. Let's do it. Go. So those are the three roads. There you go. Can't jump over that. That's a oh, wall. okay. That's a deadly wall. You do get in. How do I lives. know again? Okay, so this is this That's one's fine. Yeah, got to get. Oh, in. I got to jump to get to the. Jump on the other side. Yeah. So far, I've managed to make it over one wall, so that's pretty good. And the levels are the same each time. Oh, okay, so I got to be like farther. It's pretty tight timing to get across. There you go. Oh. Oh, I'm Kicking scared. Ass. I'm scared. Level one Level done. Level one. Nice. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Uh, it, his timing was off. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, That's yeah. okay. Remember, you can push forward to get over it a little bit. Like, get a bit more further. Oh, I yeah. see. Sometimes that helps. Oh. Uh, yeah, think of those walls as really tall. Can't get over there. 
Luckily, they're fairly distinct from, like, the big walls and the short walls. I'm just hanging out on this side. <laughs> Stand in the center. Oh, okay, Level this is a stressful two. game. It's it's high action. Dude, I just gotta lock action. in, though. I just gotta lock in. Lock and load. It's the only way. This is a lock in kind of game. <laughs> I like that sound, it's very satisfying. Oh. I think I should maybe experiment with the left hand side as well. I've been really sometimes just like tunnel visioned. Sometimes it's an easier path, sometimes it's more I deadly feel like path. you kinda wanna be in the center though, because like I feel like then you have this option to go either way. Oh. You do. That is the safe the safe bet is the um, is the middle. Hi little baby. And the flag at the end is always in the middle. So that's what that's my tactic too. I kind of stick to a left and right, like two different routes. Oh my God, no! Oh, survive the onslaught. Oh, that's, okay, that's that's a tough area. That's right where I there. needed the left hand side. This is only level three, yo. Yeah. Oh, yes. Good. Spotted. Um, Nostalgic says, I like the pseudo parallax effect. The raw walls oh. scroll faster than the ground. I thought yeah, I the ground is further beneath you. You're like you're driving on floating, oh. floating roll roads. Come on. Okay, my timing's just bad. He's got great effect of the three roads. Use the forward if it's um, is this getting time? back up and then do the stay back and then jump forward as you jump over it. There you go. Okay. That'll help you a little bit. Oh, it's tight. And, um, and I was talking with Mirsad about this game and I said it's got a lot of, like the game engine has tons of potential. Um, in terms of enemies, like you've just got, it's open. You've got oh. three roads. You can have anything coming from the top, the bottom, the sides. Oh, oh that's a tough one. I, I, I was trying to anticipate because I remembered last time I kind of failed because of, oh, <laughs> kind of failed because of just my skill level. <laughs> this was going on. No, oh no, no. I got to tell you, this game is not easy, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't make you blame the game oh it's definitely all, me it's all about like yep i deserved it i could have made it i just didn't oh i saw it coming i didn't oh. react fast enough but also if you memorize the like you almost have to on some levels I mean, this is level two no this is level three. Oh, it gets rough oh it gets rough so hard okay so there's an earlier version hey buddy, on? Uh, on the Atari Age forums um, that has uh, less levels that you can try out. It is the first X levels. I cannot remember how many levels. Oh. Broadcaster, easy to learn, hard to master, goes perfectly Correct. with that premise. Yep. Correct. And it simple is. design. It's great. Uh, yep. Easy to understand what's going on. Easy to see what's going on. There's one button, left, right, forward, back. There's nothing complicated about it. Um, but it's challenging. Oh, tricky. Oh. What's up, buddy? Cat. Sid, are you trapped? Not to be your... confused with the uh, character from Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Is that the bad kid yeah, that's in the Toy kid. Story? <laughs> Are you being a bad Sid or a good Sid? <laughs> oh. uh, you want me to give it a go? Oh, this hurts my my brain. Yeah, this is where like you need just some skills. Skills. I played with this a game a billion with times. With a Z, so. dude. The game gets so much harder. <laughs> so much harder. You will see. But you gotta lock in with this game. You really oh, do. Like, you gotta just be in the, like, complete. In the zone. <laughs> it's like one shot. Like so four, 14 over. years. Aaron, <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I should um, hand this off to you. Oh, uh, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> this one is hard. Guess what? Almost, he got the first couple. Nice. Oh, oh, good job. Sid gets to experience the first hangover. Oh, poor kitty. Is there mm. like catnip hangover? There must be. Oh. They, they never seem to have any ill effects. They're Hard because once you get your timing it off, like. New level is hard. Hands hey, off buddy. joystick. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Hi, baby. What up, buddy? Yeah, there's the most pathetic little baby cries. Oh. Who does? Hi. He's a cow cat. It's got cow markings. I don't deserve this level. <laughs> so we went over what uh, all the possible names were for Sid. I'll hand it off to you. I'll, I'll, uh, let me get the list and you can go through them. After I, after I die. Did you give the, up? Oh, dude, I don't give up. <laughs> it gives up on me. That's right. Oh, yeah, I'm dumb. I'm so dumb. <laughs> wow, the margin for error is like... It's zero up ahead. This game, zero. This game ramps. <laughs> like, I'm just letting you know, like, there's, like, level one is, like, oh. The next level is one of the hardest. Dude, I, think. I can't Level even... five is soul destroyed. This, this is in line <laughs> with something I wanted to talk about, so it's good. Fun. Trailblazer from a different perspective. Oh, I don't know Trailblazer. Nice. No, you can't jump over those. What? You have to go around them. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! No! No, no, no! Hold on, hold on. I have to, I have to do it. I have to prove one? it to chat that I'm not... <laughs> but I'm not a... You can do it. You play games 10,000 times more advanced than this. You oh, destroy dude. people on oh, them. That's not... I mean, advanced does not mean hard. <laughs> no, that's true. There's a difference. Nice. But what, this one's all about the pattern. Yep. Right hand side. Nice. <gasps> you did it! Okay, I gotta do level five and see. I, okay, okay, okay. Has Sid looked behind it and inside everything? Are you still mapping? What the, house? the hell? Yeah, <laughs> did yeah. Did you see this? You what? This it. game ramps. This isn't fair. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Preemptively. I think yes. it's the only way. It is smart way. It's literally the only way. Um, Sid has looked behind and inside everything. He's he's mapped the house. That's what cats do, man. They're yep. all about space. And they need to know escape routes. They need to know um, where to hide. Oh. More specifically, is about hiding. Where it's the best hiding spot in the house. But they they say that like cats, unlike dogs, map to spaces like they're they're like the space is what they almost bond with. Yes. And that's why like if you with some cats, if you like change like a oh. friggin' like couch, they freak like, out. They have to like sniff it and remap it in their mind. <sighs> I have to like okay, so I have to be right. I have to be way more aggressive. Yeah, you have to pull back and jump far. On this. Oh, yeah, that jump is so tricky. That 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 one to the full right hand. There's side. like no margin for error, dude. In trail, nostalgia says in Trailblazer, you bounce a ball down a course of a few lanes with tiles that have various effects. It was. A, on a disc that had C64 on one side and Atari on the oh, other. Oh, did you see that? Trailblazer's a, fat, a flat yump. Okay, I've played some games like that. Uh, Bounder is another game that sounds like this. that. There's a, there's a number of games. Oh, I haven't made it, eh? I mean, dude, I'm not even close. Like, jump it too early. But then, but then it disappears. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I okay. Know. You gotta get it. You oh. gotta get doing it early. It needs to be perfect. I cannot make a mistake. What needs to happen? I gotta be on the edge of this platform too. I can't fuck around. Yes. So, so like, set right yourself up early for edge. There you go. Oh, oh. smart. Get out oh, of there. <laughs> I forgot everything. <laughs> oh, okay, edge, edge, edge. Oh. Okay, that makes sense. I'm being dumb. The problem is, like, you make it so far, and then you're like, oh no, a new obstacle, and then you have to memorize that new obstacle, and yeah, then make it through the completely hard part in line again. with something I wanted to talk about, which is perfect. Oh, good. Oh. 
I cannot speak and defeat. Speak and defeat. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay, I jumped a touch too early. Literally, I have to be perfect. Oh, no. I cannot make mistakes. No. I told you, level five is so crushing. <laughs> soul crushing. My soul. Oh. 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 Okay. My heart. Oh, like I can't even. I, I, I one time I made it. <laughs> I think even... you've uh, gone over the uh, skill curve now. You can end it off anytime. Dude. I... Or are you, are you gonna be? Per oh, too early. You have a bit more time. So you start saying things like I've run out of the skill curve. I'm like, dude, I cannot <laughs> stop. It happens. It happens. You, first, there, there's there's the skill bell curve. First, you have some beginner's luck. That's only that only works on the first ever try of a game. Then that starts really high. It's not even a bell curve. It starts really high, then immediately ramps down to zero because you had beginner's luck, and then you have way too much confidence. Then it builds up as you accumulate skill. Then it hits a peak where you're like, okay, I got it. And then you start being sloppy because... Oh, nice. Oh, it's, it is brutal. Brutal. Like, that first jump is not the hard part. The hard part is where you just saw, where there's things everywhere. <laughs> Gonna do it. You going back in? I'm going, fucking going locked in, in, dude. I'm locked in. You're locked in. <laughs> Wait, oh, no, what's going on? Oh, you wrecked it. You waited too long. <laughs> I waited too long. No, no. Let me let okay, me blaze okay, through okay. them. No, oh, I forgot about the timeout. Oh, that's okay. That's so punishing. That's so punishing. I needed a moment to gather myself and my emotions, and even that it didn't even give it to me. I'm like I've been destroyed by this game. I have like a second to breathe. It's like guess yeah, what? Back no, to the there beginning. There is no second to breathe. There's only more pain. Oh, so this, this is what I was been reflecting on. So it's really interesting. Um, I feel like there's an 80s, and it's so specific to the 80s. There's an 80s game design that is so in line with this game. Okay. And it's the same with Hero. And it's like there's this old D&D &D module called Tomb of Horrors. Okay. And the concept is like in D&D, &D, right, you create a character and then you like go on an adventure, you know yep. what I mean? And you like have this big story and all this bullshit. Tomb yep. of Horrors is like, you know what we're going to do? There's one dungeon, you're going to roll a character, and in the first room, you're going to get killed. <laughs> and then what? in the f and you're going to basically roll characters until you figure out how to get past this first room. What? And then you go into the second room and you get through the second room and guess what? You get killed. And then you have to roll oh a new character. God. And you're like, and the concept is, is like, you're not creating what? a character that goes on this giant journey. You're basically respawning just characters over and over and over again and slowly learning over time this dungeon and you and your buddies are like mapping it out. It's a legendary old module, Tomb of Horrors. Wow. But I think about Hero, and I think about this, it's the same concept. It's like, you're essentially, if, you, if this was a car... Oh, you can wait on this. If this is a character, it's like, you, like, how many characters did I kill? Oh. I just killed, like, 50 characters. But, <laughs> but that old, I feel yeah. like it's a very 80s Atari game design style that you don't yeah. really see as much in new newer games. There are well. some elements, but this, like, the brutality of, like, literally the second room you enter into, dead. This second is room, definitely dead. carries the brutality of 80s video games. But the ability to try again is a modern sensibility. Back in the day, you're like, you start from the beginning. But that's Tomb of Horrors. <laughs> oh, yeah, you make it. That's Tomb of Horrors. That's an 80 sensibility. That's what I mean. This lets you continue. Let's you continue. Oh, so this game's but yeah, Tomb of Horrors. Yeah. It's like okay, maybe you make it like down to the depths of the dungeon, yeah. and you've like you've literally spent ye like a year trying to do this. You've rolled your <laughs> oh, best geez. character. You get down to the thing. Oop! You roll badly. You're dead. And that great character you rolled, it's done. But like you're rolling characters, but you can obviously refuse characters. 
No, um, um, you can't. You, once you once you, you roll have... a character, you're playing that character. Oh, really? No rerolls. Well, you, yeah. Well, your stats, right? Like you get yeah. to pick the character you want to play, and right, then yes. even in some of the Tomb of Horrors, what they suggest is that like any character that you've played, you should find their body in the dungeon. <laughs> so you're just There's like a stack over you just there, see, and it's this notoriously brutal module. But you think about like that model of design, rather than like writing some giant module where you can go and travel and your character goes through some heroic journey of like becoming like a thing it's like no you are just gonna grind this one dungeon and like we're and and we're just gonna like kill you and kill you and kill you and the joy is that like at some point you and your buddies will like defeat this dungeon and no one will understand that you spent so many years but you think about the replayability of that being part of the design of the entire game right and hero reminds me a lot of that actually right you respawn with this oh. hero that then like you die yeah. you die you die but you slowly like learn as a player to like navigate the darkness of this whole land you know so i was like i was doing some research on tomb of horrors i was like that's such an 80s kind of atari vibe you know of like in a way it's a challenge of like rather than writing like a 500 page module they have a very small but brutally punishing dungeon yes. that then you just and then the, the the joy is like you learning this like and mapping this like thing and I think of a lot of even the RPGs we've played makes me really think that like RPGs in the context of Atari have yep. a sort of Tomb of Horror style to them and the more and it just because of the limitations of the console not being able to like render like a Skyrim world <laughs> yes. but the beauty of that is like in a way like that feeling of trying to like map and learn these dungeons it's and like and like this is a perfect example of this is like you grind this out and then it's like you get better at it but you yes. learn the moves it's You'll... a cumulative effect yes and it's meant to be and it's a gauntlet basically it's sort of what it is it's this like old school like gauntlet style thing where yeah. and and what's interesting is you almost have to not be attached to your character which is <laughs> which is in a way antithetical to what contemporary D, &D has become where you're so special your character is like going on this journey you're this chosen one versus with this old school 80s thing you just have to go like you know what like you know who knows which character is going to be the one that ends up beating tomb of horrors you don't yeah. know you you it's might random you might get lucky you might not and you learning and this really really punishing area is just everything oh yeah ultimate example um that is the king come deliverance uh, Kingdom, where in the hard mode you die about nine or ten times on the first screen. Oh my god! Either you're born or in childhood, because that would be <laughs> realistic. Yeah, and it's like. Oh. But you think that's interesting. But I do really. I, I I don't know if there's like I'm sure I'm not the first one to think about this, but I just keep thinking like this Atari '80s gauntlet style RPG is like I never thought of that as its own genre, but like I really yeah. started to see that everywhere in these like in these things and, and hero was really made me think of it well, I was like man that it hero is. style is like yeah you, you have know. to go back to the beginning exactly. again this one is like no you don't have to go right back to the beginning which i am very appreciative of yeah and you just think about like um uh contemporary game design is about you are special and the thought of like you know ever yeah. you, you, and then it's just like it's it's quantity it's like and you you think about dragonborn right like it's like <laughs> you will be the head of the mages guild the oh the friggin dark brotherhood you're gonna <laughs> yeah. be like you're super this character super right? special and actually the games if, are arguably not that hard that the narrative power fantasy um, but you can also, I think the other side of it is that you end up having this sort of, like, gatekeeping that can happen of just, like, you know, oh, games used to be tougher. Tomb of Horror <laughs> Back in my day. Th dude, 3.5, man? Hell yeah. You're talking my language, my guy. Ah! No! Yeah, and um, because uh, right now I'm playing Tomb of Annihilation is okay. a uh, 5e module, which yep. is a sort of, like, it's a more... Uh, tuned down version of Tomb of Horrors, but I, uh, I got fascinated with like studying like where did this come from? And, yeah, reading the the Tomb uh, of Horrors module and just seeing this like, but it's legacy. also but the b bang for your buck, right? Like if you buy D and D module, it's almost designed to be like, well, here is a monster manual and the module and the player's handbook. Like they they'll get, they're gonna sell you like like yeah. fifteen books versus yeah, well, Tomb of Horrors. Yeah. It's like 
you got this one brutal dungeon, <laughs> and I just imagine you, it's you and your cool. buddies. Replay value is huge. Hundred percent, and it fits in line. Literal with, replay value. <laughs> and this game is like obviously it doesn't send you right back to the beginning, but it's like it's the same thing where like the accomplishment is defeating these difficult tasks, and like if you don't have as much um, content, this uh, jump is brutal. You got to make the content really, really, really work. Oh, good work, dude. Yeah, you have to. Do you haven't well, played like, in a what while? What am I gonna? What, what is it <laughs> gonna? Just don't let it count down to zero. I'm not gonna start. No, you have to back all the way up, and then ride, and then ride the wind. No, way too early. What? Wait. How do I even do this? Back up. Wait to the last second. No, wait to the very last second. I don't understand and then jump. why the last second. That's, that's the only way you're gonna make it, because you have to push all the way in the midair. There you go. You gotta do it again. You gotta pull back. Is and that okay? Okay. Yeah, it's the. Welcome to the Tomb of Horrors, my guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the fucking Tomb of Horrors. <laughs> oh. Imagine if you had to roll a new character every time this guy dies. Oh, be brutal. <laughs> yes, kittens. You got. You've had so many treats, oh. Atari. I loaded that. Um, ball up with so many treats and anticipated that you would be sharing them, oh. but you did not share them. You can't even jump over these guys, too. No, no. The only thing you can jump over are the thin barriers. That's it. Reading D&D modules was fun for the lore and maps. Oh, yeah, dude. Those maps, dude? Oh, my God. Looking at those old maps is, like, delights me to know it. Tomb of Horrors also featured a prominently Ready Player One novel. It was too obscure to be used in the movie. Oh, that's too bad because it's so it's such a classic, right? It's oh. it, and it's just like le legendary. But also, if you beat Tomb of Horrors legitimately, it's like, dude, <laughs> had you? Have you? Oh no, definitely not. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't played. I you what's know, what's the estimated like play time? Oh my god, it really depends, right? Like, Hundreds of hours. Who knows how many times? Because okay. you you as a party need to discover and like out and learn the tricks and like how yeah. long does that happen right and then it's like does your dm like help you do they know right like, you know do be they a prick, right do they like do they also give you like the edge of it they give it. you do they give you items you know but yeah. it is it's a totally different style of dnd &D, right like the concept of contemporary dnd &D is like your character is everything you know you think of Baldur's gate right like it's like you build this like character that then like you get attached to, you explore a world. Roll character time plus 15 minutes plus time for funeral. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> and so, like, um, they'd, people would do narrative things where they'd be like, oh, your character, like, sees, like, a vision and then it, like, goes mm. through and acts through. Like, there's ways to do it, but, like, the old school way was really, like... And then, but old school D&D, &D, right, you weren't attached, you couldn't be attached to your character because, like, right. the, the ability to kill you was just, like so easy right and it has been the criticism of five e. oh, God. contemporary dnd &D is it's the player is a lot safer it's actually a mm. lot harder to kill someone but also that um works better for long form storytelling right yeah if you really don't want to reset and piss off your players oh, but also like becoming a it's also an interesting like lesson in attachment right being attached you almost treat these characters with different a really different sort of like <laughs> sensibility right like this car yeah. like i don't fucking care about this car at all. <laughs> or the driver how many, how many cars have died oh. how many how many people have died in trying to defeat this but but then too many but but me as the player like trying to navigate this, that's the, that's the hero right the hero is yes. me attempting this thing over and over again oh Yes. That was the thing I, I wish, if I could go back, I wish I would have asked uh, John, not about Tomb of Horrors, but like where he got the idea of this sort of gauntlet style. Like if that was something that he that he intuitively figured out with Hero, or if that was something right. that like, I really wish I'd kind of like, I didn't realize, I didn't think about that until later, you know? Oh. There you go. Possible cat names over here. Let's for this see. dude, for Sid. We've got Ninja. Yeah. That works. Yeah. We got Static. Is he black and white? We got Rorschach, Rory for short. Yeah. Inky Pokey Chip. Inky Pokey. Those are all different Inky. ones. Inky. 
Uh, pokey from the pokey chip. Makes sense. Chip. Yeah. Chip, then, just chip. T-I-A, Tia. Yep, Tia. But Stella. that would be for more for a girl cat. Stella. Stella, yeah. Stella. So we got Stella. We got uh, Vector. Not to be confused with Victor. No. Vic. Vector. Yep, Vic. Vic Chip. Ooh, we got one here, Sid. Oh, Let's that's see. terrible. Moss. M-O-S. And also the name of the character on the IT crowd. Bite. Yeah. Not or, a very or, or great bit, name. Bite. Bit or Bite. Or, I don't think they, they really they're better work. Bite. Beam. Raster. What's that? Uh, it's a way to, instead of vector drawing graphics on the screen, raster is like going left to right, drawing it like a television. Good. So that's like the normal way of doing it. We got Domino. Yeah, black and white, right? We got Oreo. It's a black word. and white. <laughs> All these black and white names. We got right? Spec, which works. Yeah, he's got Specs. We got Button. Oh, Button. We got Marbles. Marbles is a good one. Yeah, Marbles. We got Scrambles. Scrambles the cat. A pepper chip, and we got Chip as well. Oh, we got Chip twice. Yeah. It's okay. We came up with it independently. We got Blitter. Um, Lynx and Jaguar as well as classics. Yeah, it, it was very... Oh, God damn it. He was really close to being a Lynx. I think Sid is... Sid's right, you know? Once you hear it, it's like... It this. is. You can, you can, like, understand, like, oh, yeah, Sid. Because it is a real person's name, too. Sydney, right? Sid for short. Is your long name Sydney? Sydney Crosby. <laughs> yeah. Sid, this level so Sid, cool. the Sid the Kid. Oh my god. Please be the end. Please be the end. Oh. 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 Level 15. Thin roads now. I also oh. just think old school 80s stuff had um was was much more punishing for the player. Oh. You know absolutely what I mean? Like, like it's like the the you have agency, but like because it evolved from the arcade sensibility yeah, which of is, give me more quarters. So it's like, yeah, yeah it's got to be hard, Because right? that's the whole monetizing element, right, is like... Yes. And also, you want something to be hard when you have an arcade or a game at home. You don't want to be like, oh, it's too easy and you're done in 10 minutes. You want it to have, especially when you're paying, you know... The equivalent of a hundred over a hundred dollars sometimes. That's the thing. It's uh, like, in today's dollars yeah, for a, an Atari twenty six hundred game. It's almost a game. game design like challenge, but also part of a feature of these games of just being like. Nice. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it's on the right. Uh, yeah, it's one of those games. Uh, oh, and like, then I can't even pause. I need to keep playing. You have to keep playing, dude. I gotta lock in. I just gotta <laughs> lock in. Chase. Chase the beam. Yeah, Chase is pretty good. Ray and Trace. Chase. Chase the beam. Oh, you did really good though. I think I you can know. do this one. I, I think it's possible. We just gotta give me a couple shots at it. Goodbye, <laughs> wizard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice knowing him for ten minutes, wizard. Okay, yep. <laughs> You're like an AI <laughs> learning bit by bit. It's it, Tomb of Horrors! <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. It's truly Tomb of Horrors. Yeah, Tomb of Horrors. It's like, next victim. It's like, guess what? You thought, you learned that this door was like, has a trap on it. Turns out you didn't realize that it had two traps. <laughs> <laughs> but I made it all the way to the... It's two hours into the game. <laughs> it's like, sorry. You like that kid? <laughs> Well, he's gone now. Mourn later. Roll again. Left. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, my... Uh, nice. it elevates my heart rate, this game. At 100,000 bits up. Help. Something's wrong with the ZPH stream. Flies. Flies. What is going on with the ZPH stream? Sorry, kids. There's nothing wrong with the ZPH stream. You'll have to elaborate. Something. <laughs> on that one. Something's wrong. His middle name is 6581. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is Tomb of Horrors, dude. Look, turns out the friggin... Oh, this one's brutal. You turns out that the, the, the friggin' walls can explode. <laughs> That's what it is. It's happening right now. <laughs> Sorry, nothing wrong. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, oh. But then you'll get to that and you'll be like, now what? Now what? Crash. That's the thing is that you literally get your character... <laughs> 
to a room and you're like, well, we made it past here. We are going to die. So what's the, what way are we what's the die? next step? <laughs> what is the next step? And then you don't play for a couple months and you come back and you're like, no, summer vacation ends. <laughs> lag here, Vitoko. You'll just have to reload the stream if you're getting lag. Um, that would mean it, it, it's, just, oh, it's just buffering for you. Uh, we haven't lost one frame. We haven't lost any skip frames. I figured out so many things in the past little bit about the stream that have improved the quality of the stream so much. It's, it's an iterative process. It's it is. Oh, not, not oh, that's far. the thing is I just like I'm like a literally like a tiny bit Pixel off with off. that one. They're gonna pop up on the last. Oh, you gotta move forward oh. on that one. Well, I'm just, but, but, but it's also like I don't know what the fuck's coming, so it's like, how can it's I? So true. Pixel off. Oh. <laughs> Tomb of Horrors. You cannot. It is the. It is the Tomb of Horrors. It is what's is. happening. It is the Tomb of Horrors. No, the horror. Okay, so this one was came up on the left, right, left. Oh, in the middle, right oh, down the center. Oh, they got you. They're like, heart. oh, oh, you want the flag? Oh, you no, want no, it? No, 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 you don't want the flag. You don't this get the flag. This game is all about debating you. No, you can't jump over the wall, unfortunately. That would be way too easy. So, you know, to move, move, and then go off to the side. Left, right. Off to the side. Edge, 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 edge. Yes! Oh, my chest. Level 16, uh, defeated. Dude, I just gotta lock in. Level 17. I just gotta keep locking in. Four more <laughs> <laughs> How can I know? There's you no can't. way I can know. Tomb of Horrors. You can't. It's the this Tomb, of, tomb horrors. of Horrors. <laughs> it's so cool that it, I wanted to talk about it. It's so fun that a game it's actually so aligns with, like, whatever. Because it's this old school, and you just don't see that in the same way in, like, in Temporary games. No, like. you don't because they don't want you to feel that defeated. This one, people are expecting defeat. That's In the thing. Atari game. When you when you sign up for a Tomb of Horrors, it's like you gotta know what you're getting into. Yeah. Uh, Gamma Dev says the last one is. Did I mention the tar pits moment? Is that part of a Tomb of Horrors? Is it tar pits? Big like jump there. Uh, Zeptari, how many levels? There are 20 levels, so we're on uh, level 17. Back. Oh, that's Big right. Jump. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh. It's always just a good idea just to go back as far as you can. <laughs> I just didn't Plus, even... it gives you more time to um, realize. To assess the situation. Yeah. Back. Nice. Oh, I just got scared. I didn't know. <laughs> like I guess it's so I'm scary. Here. <laughs> no, I failed again. <laughs> oh, the horror. The horror. It was on the left, right? No, oh, I it was it on the. I can't remember. We, I, you just got a terrible. Got to map the either. dungeon, dude. That's the only way. Yeah, mass, map the dungeon. Just got to map the fucking dungeon. Oh, it's from the Pitfall commercial. Oh, cool. Uh, where somebody's about to grab the treasure only for a tar pit to open under under the guy, um, the guy's feet. Did you know Jack Black was in the original really? Pitfall commercial as a kid? That is, that's so He's got so an explorer's crazy. hat on. He's like super young. He basically has an explorer's hat on. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, oh. oh. There's not much room to maneuver no, you got to, you just got to know, man. You got to know. You got to map the tomb. Map the tomb. It's the only way. No, oh. you're not enough over. Yeah, it was like. There's literally just enough room for your car. I mean, you can hang over the edge, but that's dangerous. I can't believe I forgot that that's from the Pitfall commercial. Yeah. This reminds me of Beat Saber, but you can't. But there you have kinds of hit points. Yeah, they just, you're just dead on this one. It is kind of Beat Saber-ish with the moving left and right. Oh, oh it's really? Because I'm anticipating it because it's yeah. so tight. It is very tight. Well, you you have to be a step ahead, but not too far ahead. That you yeah. Jump into the, the forget into the void, into the planet oh. below. Back to the spice mines for you. Nice. Oh. 
<sighs> like that's crazy how much you gotta like nail that. Yeah, you just, and it is this interesting, like, side of game design, right, where you just, you just have to play it and learn it, right? It's no, yep. that's just, like, that's just, you got to embrace that. See, the second run, they're so much closer together. There is a technique, let me show you, that you can jump uh, around them. Oh. I don't know if that's useful. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. It's, it's much harder to to do, but some of those are so tight that it might make sense. It's, it's actually really hard. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's just some speedrunner tactics right there. Yeah. Oh, some yeah. More advanced well, tactics. Speedrunning in this game would be about not dying, because oh, everything yeah. moves at the same speed. I can see somebody completely speedrunning Somebody this. executing this perfectly. Like, that's a hard God move, damn, man. It's so tight. It's really, really close. Yeah, I remember I was like, you know, there's all this like um, uh, questions around like kids in video games, right? Of, uh, developmentally, is it good for them? Is it bad for them? All this stuff. And, it's like, awesome for them. But what's actually one thing that they found when they were doing studies is that gamers are actually way more likely to continue after they fail because the nature of being a gamer is like you just have to push through failure. Oh, that's true. And have like a, a relationship to it. They said people who are non-gamers would actually give up far quicker than gamers Interesting. which is an interesting like like sort of sort of like oh. element that came up from the study and this is a perfect example of like you have to have perseverance to do this this, this is, game yes this game you cannot give up you cannot underestimate the heart of a champion when you're playing this game <laughs> the heart of a champion oh. is one that just it's, it's freaking bruce wayne man it's like you gotta learn. Oh, there's come. You gotta oh. learn how to fall down, man. That's yep. the only way. Just keep on getting back up. So this is a 20 fixed levels. Is there a random level option? That would be cool. Order or totally randomly generated? I mean, I think I think so, but like only if each time you play it, you forget the one. <laughs> no, but I mean, but I mean, you generate a level, but if you die, it's the same one. Because oh, otherwise, yeah. it would be just pain champ. I mean, it already is pain champ. But it is you want to make champ. it? You want to make it more pain champ? <laughs> A champ. I mean, how many how many cars have we totaled in in, this, in the effort to? I think in this one playthrough, like again, imagine if these were all D and D characters that we had oh, to roll. You, you have left, to more you have left. to go on the left. Damn it! I thought there was it was equal, so I just stayed to the right. But I gotta stay to the left. Okay. Stay to the left. Yeah. Good. Oh, and, of and course, then move to the right. Oh my God! Two more horrors. Yep, I've <laughs> made it further, and now I know what's up now ahead, and now I can memorize that and die again. It's and it's such it's an it's an old school way, man. You just don't see that as much. All right. No, I bet the flag's like right there. Cause that's hard. Also, advanced D and D. Yeah. Is, is a little bit trickier to figure out those rules. Why do I keep you? falling off there? Yeah. Oh, is yeah. it much more complex rules? Oh, yeah. Like bigger calculation sheets? Yeah, and just like way more complicated. Like, for example, um, there's this Can thing in like D&D where you called armor class. It's great. Jump over them? Yeah, armor right, class because, is good. Because in armor class, it's like you roll a 20 and it's like, if they roll higher than no, your your armor class, they hit you if they roll lower than it. Yeah, um, very simple. In uh, uh, advanced D&D, they have this thing called FACO, which is chance to hit zero. Okay. So that's how you calculate. <laughs> chance to hit zero. So yeah, it's like, even just like that alone, it's just everything was, was just a bit more complicated. Also, um, wizards uh, had a finite number of spells, and like, you really had to learn them, and once you knew them, you knew them, and then it's like... And also you had like, no, you, literally a wizard had nothing that you could do if you like ran out of spells. You're like, I'll hit you with a quarter spell. <laughs> well, that is kind of good, because to not have infinite spells, like, 
in, in a lot of video games, there is that too. It's like, well, you have to wait. You just cast a spell. You can't do but, another spell. So, but that, but the thing is, is then in like Tomb of Horrors, right? You have to decide when to use your spells. There, you just jump over, it, which is just brutal. In in contemporary <laughs> D and D, they came up with this thing called cantrips, which would be a spell that you can use infinitely, but it's way scaled down. So okay. that way, at least a wizard has something to do. If not. Right, have some small backup spells. Yeah, like you have like fire bolts you can fire, so it's like you have a default attack, basically. <laughs> I'm having Battletoads flashbacks. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thacko, dude, he knows! <laughs> yeah. Thacko. Yeah, I knew people, someone in chat would know about Thacko. Okay. Okay, what's the punishment coming up? Punishment is the correct word. No, a double! Oh, you gotta dump over both of them. But there's a beauty to like really being challenged by game hey? like it is it really makes you realize sometimes when you play these like much more punishing games like how just like how handed to you <laughs> other games are yeah look to hit armor class zero requires algebra this is what's wow. up so rather than just and they're like wizards of the coast was like why don't we just have them roll a 20 and if it's like a four it's above or below it's is, like is there a big use of computers to accompany games if there's so many calculations. I mean, this I is... can't even make it over dude, there. this is 80s stuff, right? So, oh. like, no, right? Well, there wasn't... You could. You, I mean, you could... You, everyone would have a calculator, most likely, but it's all it's pen and paper, so the point is to, like, do it more old school, you know? Right. I'd, say, I'd say nowadays there's a bit more use of computers. Maps is a really common thing to be used now, oh, like digital yeah. maps. Also, just to solve the problem of having to print off all this bullshit. That too, yeah. You can just throw a map on a TV, you know, icons, and then you have, like you know, hexagonal or squares that connote, like, you know, 10 feet or something. So then you have, like, right. movement speed and stuff. So you can make it more like a video game, but... I'm gonna die here. But graph paper <gasps> was the old... Dude! Okay. What am I supposed to... I don't deserve it. I don't Number 19, second to last level. <laughs> Irregular platforms now. Uh-oh. Uh, BR Pocock says there's a really nice D and D online service now that manages character sheets. Yeah, totally. I mean that makes sense. To, like just to alleviate the problems of pen and paper and calculations. Like the fun of it is playing it and playing the game that the the DM has set up for you. Totally, but not, also it's not, not calculations. Oh, but that's part of the fun, right? Like, yeah. it's I mean, it, understanding the calculations. You have to well, know that. And also, the calculations are like not that hard now with with D and D, right? It's like you roll six dice, add them up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's tons of tools now. But back in the day, you had graph paper and yeah. one module, and probably someone playing heavy metal music. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like right. It's in the. It's like in the movies, man. I mean, they did a pretty good representation in Stranger Things of playing D and D. It's a. It was a little. A little much, but. It, it got the spirit right. Oh, yeah. And We're like are gathered around a table and people are excited and they're all playing different characters. And, the th but, and I think the thing it did capture is just like how much effort goes into like yes. um, these things and how like, I mean, that's the thing is now studying and understanding like the old modules you're, you're looking at like an insane amount of like hours spent. Like you think of Tomb of Horrors, right? The feeling that you would have as a, as a team having like been immersed in this world for, in some cases, years with this attempt to beat this like one dungeon, yeah. you know? Uh, Gamadev says a total dick move would be if you missed the flag by jumping over it, made you do the course again, a la Star Wars Arcade. Yeah, in the manual that I have, it says you can miss the flag, but I've jumped over it. Maybe it means if you don't, um, if you go to the side of it, but I've never gone to the side. I'm always in the middle. It's a good thing to, I'm going to, once we beat the game, which is two more levels. Once um, you beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. You've done some pretty hard levels. I don't know about that, man. This is getting tougher and tougher and tougher. <laughs> Pathfinder, dude. Pathfinder is fucked. It's great stuff, but Pathfinder is, <laughs> Pathfinder is, I love Pathfinder, but it's, it's complicated. Is it? Yeah. It's just there's so many books and so many rules, which is like, yeah, just just kind of like kind of the hybrid old school new school type mm. stuff. Um, Pierre Polkock said, "Last game I DM'd, we had 
character sheets in D and D O online, I'm guessing. Yeah. With our individual tablets, mobiles, and computers. Yeah, that's yeah. the kind of like new way to do it, you know. I still have a. I still like to have the pen and paper, but I actually do all my spells off of an app because then it can oh, like it has okay. a list of all the spells and that's then handy. tells you how many you have like that day, and then if you forget, it's just. And then you can look through the spell book and like decide which ones you want to learn, and all the rules are right there. Does that alleviate the uh, dungeon master from keeping track of things? Does he just put his trust in you that, oh, okay, you're keeping track well, of things? Well, he'll work. ask, like, he'll be like, how, how much, what are your resources like at the end of a game? And you'll be oh. like, oh, yeah, I use, like, two one-level spells, like, uh, why not? Um, but, but I'd say, like, that really helps quite a bit. Like, that's a really... But also, like, not all characters are the same, right? Like, if you're a fighter, it's like, what are you doing? I hit them with my sword. <laughs> yeah. So, like, wizard is, like, the more complicated one because you got to, like, manage your spell book. But not every game's the same, right? And and every D and D is beautiful because it's like literally everybody uh, plays D and D slightly differently, and because mm. every table's different, and interested in different things, every DM has its own style. So right. it's, it is just like a sandbox that then you can make it what you want. You know, some people it's literally just improv theater and they never do any combat. Some people True. never do any role playing and it's just it's literally just yep. grinding. I've, I've played games where really the dice don't matter very much yeah. and it's more about like what it's like an interactive story yeah. at that point and it's fine it's great and the and the dm doesn't want you to die so it's like well it's okay you survive whatever you the survive. opposite of tomb of horrors is. yes that would be the opposite and it's um yeah he wants you to survive and it's about enjoying yourself yeah, and like kind of more, much more social, you know? And then anywhere in between there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then like uh, Pathfinder's kind of D&D 3.6. Yeah, they, yeah they, it's 3.5 plus is what I've heard it called. Because it's mm. like you have all the 3.5 books plus all these other ones, you know? Yeah, this level is brutal. Also, the other thing about it is that like at a certain point you also need to just like trust each other you know what yes. i mean there's a point where you're like if you're playing a game with your friends it's like are, are they are, gonna cheat you know like so. and can we actually do anything if they do either it's one of those things where you just have to go you know what like let's be honest and then for those big roles you like you make them and make them public but yeah but it is that thing where you also gotta like that's the fun of it is you are i think playing D, &D with a bunch of strangers would be tough because it's like, right so. But nothing's impossible, you know? But it is also like a tabletop versus a uh, computer, you know, a CRPG is what they call it. It's, it's different medium, right? Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. <sighs> oh, okay, we made Level it. Level 19. Oh, oh, okay. It is insane, Zaptari. Uh, and, and I'm not giving away... <laughs> I'm not giving away anything by playing all the levels because... Because good luck, kids. Good luck. It's not about knowing what's happening. It's about playing the the difficulty that this is. And I mean, you have to have your hands on the joystick to even understand the moves and the difficulty and precision you need for these jumps. You have no idea how fucking good you are right now. You got no... <laughs> We're super pros now. We're just like... You know, judging by how many deaths... Uh, this should keep track of how many deaths. How many characters you had to reveal. Yes. Yeah. How many cars some, were, were... Some games do that. Some modern games. I love And that. it all almost acts like a score. It's like, you've had 500 funny, deaths. Funny weird stats. Fallout has all that. Definitely. Yeah. Like, how many, how many things you've stolen? How many things you've done? <laughs> yes. Muscle memory, the game. Yeah. I think, I think Skyrim does as well. This one's all about huge jumps. I'm just gonna throw some garbage at the end at you. I know it is. I yep. just, I just can feel it in my. And it's like, oh, feel it okay. In my bones. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I got to do it See, all again I, and memorize the. That's maybe that's. Oh, because oh. I had to pull back and then. Yeah. Because you have to timing. maneuver this guy. This game's all about timing, dude. Folks know you're up to something if you suddenly keep asking for passive perception. That's exactly stories. right, What's dude. That? What's that? What's oh, that's where, like, perception? passive perception is your ability to sort of perceive the world, right? Just so in general, as you walk through it. Because perception, like, let's say I'm, like, we do a check and, and you're, like, uh, I don't know, you're, like, mm, I'm curious what's going on in this, like, village that's a little ways down. I'd be, like, roll a perception. And it'd be, like, let's say you roll really well, then the thing's, like, well, now you, you see something. 
Versus passive perception is like, are you a like you ask players, you're oh, like, nice pop ups. Oh no. You're just like, hey, roll your perception is in. Do you sense something? And then it's like, if they roll badly, it's like, never mind. <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. wait. That's what that? I say. Wait, 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 wait. Something. No, not never mind. <laughs> I start searching the room. <laughs> yeah, I, I start like, um, it's yeah, and it, and there's just skill checks for all kinds of different things. Um, which I do think they, they, they figured out just combining things. Because back in the day, they used to be like hyper specific skill checks, like use rope for example. It's like it's like how good are you at using rope? Oh no! You yeah. know they they combined athletics, um, which is nice because it used good. to be like climb, swim, That's jump, many, right? run. Right? It's like then you spend skill points to build up all those individual ones. Versus it's nice to just have sort of athletics check. Is like That's way better. it's just streamlined. Because it, it does make sense that if you're athletic, you're probably pretty good at a lot of things. Yeah, and it's also just like hard to like when you have things like concentration on your spells. It's then it's like really hard to be like, I'm also going to invest in jumping and swimming and climbing because then you've used all your points. <laughs> Versus perceptions, like oh, that's a big jump. <laughs> the most important, like how well can you see the world around you? Yeah. Search, investigate, all that stuff. Yeah, these are all big jumps. You have to push forward and then pull back immediately. And you're gonna jump right on the corner of these these diagonal ones. Yeah. But don't drive too close to the corner. Here's delivery. Power supply for my new computer. Or was it Delicio? It might have been. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check the oven. And why are they breaking in? For my Delicio, get out of here! Here, Delicio. Hey, cat. Hi. Hey, cat. Hi, Sid. Oh, what are you up to? Meow. You're so tiny. He says, I'm hungry, it's four o'clock. You're such a cute tiny guy. Yeah, well, we're on the last level. We're Don't worry, we, level. we're gonna beat it, Sid. Oh yeah, we're I, dominating it. You might not believe us, but you better, Sid. Oh my god, there's like super crazy pop-ups right at the end, like super close ones. I wouldn't expect anything less from a Tomb of Horrors. Yep. Hey. hey, mister. Oh, isn't he soft? Brand new fur soft. Such a sweet boy. He is. So he was cuddling right away. First day. He's like, I'm gonna cuddle with you. <sighs> what? Why'd you move? Why? But yeah, I would say that, like, um, I used to be a real, like, only, I was a 3.5 player exclusively, yeah. and then I had this epiphany a while back where I was like, oh wait, I actually think streamlining this so we just play, do more story is better. I used to have that, like, but it is that thing where it's like, if you beat Tomb of Horrors, you're like, you must also <laughs> feel the pain! You know, mm. there is that sort of side of D&D &D where you're like, you must embrace this, and so, but I'm, I've become much more liberal. Now I'm like this. All this stuff. It's like, oh yeah, it's okay for for things to be a bit more streamlined. Yeah. Instead of like a giga specific, you know. That's right. How is your uh, left finger strength? Uh, let me check my massive chart. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you know, and and also the uh, the other thing about like the, these games is is as you level up, um, sometimes the game just starts to fall apart. Yeah. Just the power levels and just insane bullshit you can do. Did Kiki test and complete all these levels or just... I've completed all these levels. And figured that because it's supposed that every transition is able to be done by themselves. I tested the whole game. It's... And you're like, oh, why can't you uh, just breeze through it? Because the game is goddamn hard. Well, like without Doesn't matter. also without your suggestions of certain things, like you had to like you give me some subtle little tips, really really helped. Can you go uh, check the front door for sure. just in case there's porch pirates, which there haven't been, but actually one time we thought there might have been because they said they delivered it with 
without a picture? Or was there a picture? I can't remember. Anyway, there's a delivery. And it just never came. And they said they delivered it. Um, so we had to ask for another one. Luckily. Luckily, they replaced it because we've never, ever... Oh, good. Sorry. Still in my spot. <laughs> He's like, eh, he gave up. Nobody. I need to sit. Enjoy the game. Sid. He's like, there's enough room for everyone. Maybe not. Whew. At least that guy stays on the same side. Now, this is bullshit. <laughs> hey, that one's in the middle, so if I stay over to the very, very right, I can do it, but it's going to be so tough. It has Sid met Bernie? That's a good question. Uh, no. Um, it's not. I hope he doesn't, because it's not a toy. <laughs> okay. okay. Left, right, right. Oh, yeah. It's just like oh. I just know there's gonna be some bullshit. Oh, oh that's we were my fault. That's oh, okay. It's okay. huge jumps. So, so many in a row. And I think those jumps are like bigger than these jumps. Like just a little bit bigger at the end. Like the biggest jumps of the game. Because there's still a bit of room. Like you can see me landing in the middle of my car on these. enough over because there's not really much time to get over far yeah enough. like i think there's technically more space on the left but like getting there is get, just the whole problem. other thing you you did the kind of jump maneuver after i had a 3d printer go missing i think i never got it like, i installed a webcam that could see the porch I had one instance where the delivery guy put the package down photographed it as proof and picked it up and took <gasps> it with him whoa fired do people not know that there are porch cameras or they just, so or they dumb. just take the gamble, right? They just... I guess so, because they know what it is. Uh, do they know what it is? They just know the delivery and the address, but not the thing inside. Yeah, because they you... shouldn't know the thing inside because yeah. that would encourage. It's just a, you can just guess it though. Like if there's something it's like, that oh, feels this is heavy, like... right? I'm just gonna do the jump. I think that's the safe thing to do is do to jump around, because getting that on the edge is really tough. What's that cat doing? He's just, he's just being cat, you know? Oh, he is chewing on tags. Oh. Just being a cat. Maybe because it wasn't a doorbell cam, just a camera pointing out the window. They didn't see it yet. Oh. So they do look for them. Right? Oh my god. Yeah, we have the painfully obvious cams to discourage stupidity. Well, the, thing, the thing that's weird, though, about cams, right, is that, like, something people don't think about is, like, you do need to, like, manage all that data. Like, just recording, yeah. like, a video for just ever. Like, it's not, like... So, in a way, like, a half of the trick of a cams is it's, like... Maintenance. Maintenance, but also, like, they say just, like, there's a lot of just fake cams you can buy that don't that's even true. work because it's, like, if someone sees a cam, they're more, like, less likely to do it. But they do say that, like, the biggest factor, like, it's pretty rare to get something on cam, as, yeah. but it is, like, but having a visible camera deters so many people. Week's worth. A week is good. Yeah, it rotates a, a week, right? And it's all down to how, how big the resolution is and the bit rate. And, oh, my God. But it's tough because it's also, like, you know, maybe you discover something after that. Week. Oh, my thing. Yeah. It got freaked out. Somebody was watering the. Don't attack me, please. Don't attack me. Watering the plants outside. So I got my parents a whiz cam for their driveway. And the 512 gigabytes wasn't even a quarter full after a year of 24 7 recording. The static shot compressed really well. That's a good point. I guess wow. you can yeah. do it. Yeah, use the right compression because things aren't. Oh my god, do things the, aren't going to move a lot. And do the right deal. If anything, they're going to get slowly dark and slowly light. Well, some will take like almost a picture every like bit. Like you know, it's uh, interesting how yeah. they like how they approach it. 
depends what the end result is that you want. It's going to be... And the resolution as well. And, and really, the end result is a video of somebody stealing your stuff. Your stuff, right? Yeah. That's it. Like, but I, but I do, th I do think that like even just having a visible camera that's not running, it's like that's actually a massive deterrent, you know? Uh, it is because they are like, oh, I don't know if they're gonna recognize me, um, especially if it's somebody locally or your neighbor or something like that. Well, they say like when people are trying to steal or do all that stuff, it's like. It's not like you're special. It's like they can steal from anywhere. So in a way, just having a subtle bit of resistance. Oh my god! It's okay. You can, it's 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 what it goes. This is records full HD plus uploads events to the cloud. I mean that's great. Oh, go into the cloud and they give you lots of storage that helps. But uh, I don't trust that one. for privacy or retention. Oh, it's so hard though. My hands are so sweaty now. Because it's hot. And I'm playing a tough game. Ah, I apologize. We'll also, get there. I'm starting to feel almost dizzy from this game. Because <laughs> it's you, the forward movement. Yeah, like I looked I looked at like the horizon. And I'm like, oh, everything's, everything's moving. Everything's moving. Yep. Yep. That's what happens. Like, you go in a car... You stare at something. There's lots of optical illusions that work on that, like ones that spin in a clockwise direction. Then you look away, and then the whole world it like it's it mutates your your um, your visual. I can't remember why it does that, but it's your it's your brain compensating. God damn it! It's so hard. This this level's like throwing everything at you, and you have to be ready to deal with all the different things. And these jumps are so brutal. You have to pull back, then jump ahead on every single one of them, and then go on angles too. Yeah, so you have to have an eight-way joystick for this. Or four-way joystick. Just not restricted to four directions. Sid believes in us, though. I have done this level before, but it, it was, it's hard. Oh, it's, it's, the car moves fast. Like, well, it's also, you, for the it's also like you have to sort of be a step ahead, but also present, right? Because it's yes. like you need to solve the problem that's like in front of you, but be, be in a good place to like land for the next one. Thank you for everybody that is keeping watching. Oh, we're, we're beating this tomb. The deadly tomb. tomb of death. I wonder how much of the difficulty is intentional and how much of it is the author got too good at the game and increased the difficulty. That's a real thing that happens, right? Yep. All the time is yep. that, like... Um, That's why you need external testers, because you get really good at your own game. You're like, I know this inside out. You planned the courses. And, and, and of course you do, because you created it, right, too. It's like, you know the... Know the tricks. You're like, yep, left, right, left, right. Way ahead of the screen. It's like, oh, I gotta pull back there. Left, right, left, right to dodge those things. This, this is this pattern all the time. Yeah, and you really have to aim for that whatever corner you want, right? Like you yep. gotta jump right on the top, of the, the like left or right edge of the corner, right? It's like, yeah, man, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's so hard. You because, have to do that corner, because if it's not, it's not going in. If you wait too long, you miss it. And if you... Oh, God. Big jumps. Big, big, big jumps. It's gonna fall. Yeah, what is that? Oh, my God. Okay, this is new. I did not play this. <laughs> uh, I did not play those fireball things. Either added That's the those. farthest we've made it, though. Yes. I don't even know what to do with those guys. And then we have to somehow get through all of this stuff to even have a chance to do it. Tomb of Horrors. <laughs> it is. Ah, oh, one pixel off. Yeah, that's 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 the need for external testers. Um, but also the beauty of it as well is it's just like the accomplishment that you feel when you beat something that's really hard is like there's no comparison, right? Oh yeah. That's the other side of it, right? The double-edged sword is like when you. When you finally defeat level 20, uh, you're like... I did it. 
But it's interesting how, like, you think of, like, the Dark Souls games, right? There still is an appetite for very hard games. Yeah. Especially from a spectator point of view, right? Because oh, it's like... Too. You oh, want to see really good players play. Yeah, because the issue in some ways with these sort of, like, hero's journeys, sort of stories where you can just kind of, kind of fulfill your power fantasies, they're not great spectator things because they sort of send you down this power fantasy. Just fun for you to have all this power, <laughs> but it's like, when you watch yeah. someone at a high level really execute on, like, a difficult level of some kind, there's just a deeper appreciation for that, like, that, basically, the efforts and the, and the like, um, skill that you're seeing. Can you cheese it by jumping off a straight away and coming back onto it and over again? That may help avoid obstacles that you didn't know existed. I guess so, but you. But that's hard. also like a, within it, in and of itself, like a challenge because you then need to. I think I'm sure someone like could execute on that really well. Like watch this. Oh. You can do it, but, but you can't. You don't get much of a distance. You almost have to go. It almost feels like not cheesing because it's almost harder to do it's, that it's than hard. just to like because you have to like. But I do employ it at um, that. Um, the barriers. Yeah, like it can be a specific like way to solve the problem of if it's a really tough part, like I use it on the barriers. So watch one this upcoming barrier, this one. That. It's because it's so goddamn hard. <laughs> it's such giant leaps. Man. They're huge. Small step for man. Giant leap. I haven't seen it, but people keep saying the House of Dragons is apparently really good. Oh, I gotta watch it. I have not seen it either. I've, I've just been hearing, I've been seeing lots of stuff online, and people have just been really recommending it. But, ah. but to be fair, it's people from my D and D group, so it's a little biased. <laughs> you know, they like people that who like type D and D and D are gonna be stoked on the dragon. <laughs> oh, well, I forgot. That's so timing. But that's but that is the show recently. I've heard that's like sort of the cool. Okay. The only thing on the block, you know. Is I mean, Game of Thrones based, is great. It's based on Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's it's, it's the, all the prequel, basically, prequel. to Game of Thrones. Okay. And which is nice, because George R. R. Um, Martin... Is that right? No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is um, he involved? Um, uh, I, th I believe he has some involvement, but I mean, all that is his original lore, right? He had a very clear outline for what happened oh, before Game of Thrones. So there's stuff to go off of. Oh, yeah, that's not like... Big ass. Yes. Big oh. ass. No, why did it go to the side? Stop it, joystick. It's just too slippery. Okay, we gotta do it. They're greasing. There. That's, what, that's what they. That's what happened. Right, somebody greased up the joystick. The sweat. You can jump off with one single pixel left on the edge. This is good practice, right? It is to jump on very, very late. It's a game you need to definitely warm up, right? Like, you need to just be, like, in the flow of it, you know? Uh, yeah, you do. It's ebbing and flowing. Sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, I got it. Other times I'm like, oh, I'm going too far, being uh, too risky, and then, it, then I'm too conservative with my jumps. Like that, I'm, I'm being too uh, risky by leaving it late. Is it pixel perfect or does it have a SA software? software? Uh, I believe it is pixel perfect. I don't know if it's software though. Or if it's hardware, but it is pixel perfect. As soon as you leave a platform, your last pixel leaves a platform, um, you're done for. So I can see this being a hardware collision game. Because there's, no need. there's <laughs> no. no need to do software collision. Yes, it. But a lot of programmers just use it. In the end, probably just easier. Sid, are you a sleepy cat? I think sleepy cat is He's entering the chat. Didn't have to kick him out. Oh my god! Not giving up. 
Don't give up. I won't. But it's, it's one of those games where it's like, well, you know the thing at the end of the level that you just got a glimpse of? Yeah, you're gonna die on it anyway, because you don't even know how it works. You gotta map the tomb. <laughs> you, right. need to, you, you need to map the tomb, and then if you take time off and then come back after months, you're like, wait, what was in this room? What are all the jumps? No. What's left, right, left, right? Was it? No. Oh my God. So far off the screen. school gotta go hard go hard if you're given an opportunity home. to get to level 20 you gotta take that opportunity that's right you don't squander it you have to do the whole game over <laughs> if you don't keep going on level 20 and i am not really keen to do that again at this point Oh, you're so close, too. Yeah, that next part was the fireball dude where I'm just going to die, but... If you abandon level 20, this turns into a future after dark. It does. And, uh, I'm trying to avoid that. Because all I have to do is finish this level and it's over. But one doesn't simply <laughs> finish level 20 Apparently so not. easily, dude. And the funny thing is the level 20 that I finished previously didn't have the fireball dudes in it. So you, see, you, so you oh, just got debated even by... I did, by the developer. <laughs> He's like, oh. He's like you thought this that. was easy, hold my beer. Yeah, because I was reading the manual before you were playing, right? Or like, while you were playing. like, where are these fireballs? Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't recognize these fireballs. I don't remember this fireball, actually. It's like, maybe I forgot. No, there's a, there's a, there's a spot for everyone to jump. Yes. It, it feels like the correct God. way to... <laughs> I bet Todd Rogers can do it. Oh, he could do it in two seconds, Todd Rogers. He can beat the game by hacking it with his mind. He's got it. He's got it, you know. Yeah, that's what I could do, is I could just do it off screen and say, yeah, I finished it. <laughs> yeah. like, you need proof? You, like, it's like, <laughs> proof. Yeah. And then you just get your buddy to prove. <laughs> just Glary right. comes in and is like, hey. Oh, come on. I did everything right there. Yeah, Larry can do it. He's and like, Larry's, oh, yeah. Larry's oh. like, I watched him. Yes, Todd, right. <laughs> do it. <laughs> and I'm a good character, so. <sighs> come on. finished the second season of Mandalorian. Oh, what did you think? Uh, not as good as the first, but uh, still very good. Uh, we will be continuing on watching it. So, um, yeah, I like the characters and the universe. Yeah, they've, got a, they've got a movie coming out, I think, for it. Oh! <laughs> so, uh, like a lengthier episode or whatever. Yeah, well, I think it's just, at this point, the most profitable um, thing they've made in this sort of new era, right? Right. Because it's, it's a good thing, because it's yeah, good, and there's it, good characters and good writing and yeah, good Yeah, and it's original, right? Like, it is it is in the world, but it kind of feels like... Um, Almost separate. Like yeah, its own thing. which is really nice, right? Like, But it's a hard thing with Star Wars, I think, it struggles with, is, like, do we rehab? How much do we... Okay, they shoot down the center. I gotta stay off to the side. Like, really on the edge. And it gives me t tons of time to position myself. Yeah. Okay, I have a strategy, at least. We've got tactics. We've got minimal tactics. All we, but need is, all we need is some tactics. Just disable the collision registers. Just yeah. cheat. It'll be easy. I mean, that's the easy way to do it. It's like, oh, I didn't crash into anything. Even the air. Come on. I also think that, like... There are some terrible actors in Mandalorian, though. Oh, yeah. Some really terrible. But it's also like Gina Serrero. Well, at times you sort of look at it and you're like, you're like, this is kind of like definitely for a younger audience. You know? 
the certain sections and units where you're like, oh yeah, yeah. this is sort of like... There's no swearing, there's no gra there's no blood. There's lots of violence. But yeah, it's, it is the sort of, it is a classic kind of PG-13 content, right? Yes. Yeah, Gina is an MMA fighter, right? So, that's her background. Yeah. She got fired from that show for... Okay, it fires where you are. Can I jump over them? You must be able to. Oh, I gotta be able to jump over those. But it fired it like one second before I was like in, right in front of it. How am I supposed to dodge that? This has to be the way. This is the way. Uh, maybe this time we'll try a rogue. See if it's a better. <laughs> the better shot at this. <laughs> might, might be a better driver, a rogue. Hmm, maybe we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll try the fighter this time. <laughs> Let's see. Barbarian. 100%. Curiosity. Um, the average family spends between four and seven thousand dollars at Disneyland. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's ex come on. It's expensive. Yeah. Um, and Tanya and I were talking about the other day. Um, Disney shows and movies are just an ad for Disneyland. That's exactly. Because right. that's where the big money's being made. It's a hundred percent. you and I saying that. Right. That's, oh okay. It's like that's the like. That's the big money. Because if you think about, like, how many movie tickets is that, right? Like, if you get so one many. person to spend seven grand at Disney World, I mean, that's that's the equivalent of, like, what? A man, like, years, a lifetime. A you lifetime know, of movie tickets. Well, it's just quite a few, like, people, right? So it's like, if you can even get, like, five or ten people to, to, to go there, you know? Okay. Fire there. Jump. Oh, is that, is that a pattern? Yeah. Middle, right? So I'm going to go off to the left. Right, left. Right, left. That's the only way. Well, just the... stay on the left, because the mi the ones go down the middle, the first ones. Yeah, so hug the left. But see uh, see what I'm, happens. But I was in those positions. So. You could be wrong, but like, what's life without experimenting, you know? Yep. What uh, are they talking about, paddles? You cannot move up and down with paddles. No. You need yeah. two sets of paddles to move up and down. You'd like an etch or sketch. Do we got a dual wheel paddles? This well, game isn't hard enough. To? Oh, he's just saying this game will be fun with paddles. Oh, uh, uh, if you only move left and right, yeah. And that's and that was what they brought up. They're like, yeah, this is. What am I doing? What am I doing? Stop it. But uh, this developer makes hard games, like Karamujo, the snail game. Hard is hard is really hard game. Oh, I gotta move ahead. I can't just stay at the same speed with that guy. have a pattern except I messed up and panicked and <laughs> fell off the head happens to the best of us yeah. don't worry I, I wouldn't even be close <laughs> I wouldn't even be close level 20 is like use all your skills all the skills you have you've accumulated through the past 19 levels and we're gonna make them the most extreme versions and really like you just gotta really just do this until you get it right like it just is like yeah. It is a pattern memorization game. Like this one is. Yeah, every level is like, oh, you gotta memorize this a little bit. Okay. Oh. 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 Hug the left. Yes. Holy shit. Oh Holy my god. Shit. Okay, he was just the last guy. This game likes to throw. Just one. one just, just, just one more thing. Another one. 
another one. You win! Hop the car drops happy, in the happy, middle happy, on the happy. right, but will st will stay on the left because you collide with the car itself. That drops in the Look middle. Look at you! Right. Yes. Look, this is the one driver who made it. <laughs> Think about like all the drivers that died for this one driver. Congratulations! Yes, thank you. Yeah, all the drivers. This is about all the workers' rebellion. There's only one worker left. It's like it's That's like the we're rebelling. Oh. How many how many players died in the tombs? Oh. In the tombs, how many there players we go. died? So, uh, what were we going to check? We're going to check something. Oh, jumping over the um a missing missing the flag completely. No. Okay, the manual lies. <laughs> Cuz in the manual it says Marks the end of the level. Must cross while on the road and not in a jump. If you jump and miss the road after the flag, it doesn't count and you die. If you miss the road. Well, yeah, if you're falling off. Oh, I see what they mean. Okay, I'm just going to die. And let it time out and do level one because it's easy. So if I jump off the road after I miss the flag, I think that's what they mean. It's good noise. Like, yeah, I think that's what they mean. You have to be on the road after the flag. Oh, congrats! You want a hard overhead platform game? Stellar Drive Mars has got your back. They got you. Um, it's really, really good. I love this style of game. And that's why I persisted because it's just right up my What's alley. What's the Atari Gauntlet, man? It's like I don't oh, know if that's yeah. I don't know if that's a term, but I I'm, I'm, I feel that man. The Gauntlet style this game feels right, like a where gauntlet. You, where you just you just grind it and grind it and grind it. And if you think about it, it's only twenty levels, but that's oh, the thing, man. It's not they, like they get hard. It ain't like it ain't an easy twenty. No. Twenty levels. Thank you so much, Nostalgic and Zeptari, cool. for hanging on and rooting me on. Rude. So let's see what's coming up. We have some things coming up. Uh, next episode, we'll see if Tony arrives. It's taking a little bit, but it is from Europe, so it's on the slow boat over. And Galagish, uh, it's pretty hot out, so we're not really keen on playing games more than we have to. So we're still putting off that 40th anniversary third day. Unfortunately, it's just the reality of uh, being hot and being mid twenties every day. Uh, another after dark we do have to finish before July because there's a contest on right now. Biopede Caravan contest. Mm. I'm just gonna put in a score. There's some great players there, so we'll see if we can do anything decent. Uh, at the end of the month, uh, July 30th, we have a, de a developer spotlight on Lawrence Stavely from Lawrence. Reboot. Uh, and we have the exclusive world premiere of Last Strike, Strike DX, which he just put out the trailer for today. So check out the trailer. Wow, does it look good. It's Last Strike, and it's a graphical enhancement and a whole bunch more stuff. And I just added spotlight on Albert Yoruso, the be, man himself from Atari. The man, age. the myth, the legend. It's good for you to have that Some, check in. Yep. Sometime in September. We've never done a long form live interview with Al Yoruso. It's time. We've talked with him on Atari Age Days. We've talked with him on um, the award show, but never an episode just dedicated never to Al. Exclusive Al. So this will be a lot of fun. Uh, be a good catch up time, especially like, oh, it's been a year since uh, Atari and Atari Age have gotten together. So I'm definitely going to solicit some questions it's a question from the audience to see what they think uh we also have the secret homebrew from champ games i touched base with him recently he's still working on it. it's taking a little bit a uh, little bit of time um but it is coming maybe in august uh i expect but he's going to keep me up to date on how the progression is and we also have a developer spotlight on chris walton i don't know when that will be um i'll have to check in with him but we've got some got three developers three developer spotlights kind of uh brewing brewing and then a fourth one i don't know when my birthday is in september a uh, great present well there you go zeptari you can put out your questions to him um what else we'll see what happens 
um, what is coming up for the next episode. Right now, it's Atari 8-Bit on Tuesday. We'll see. It's going to be tough because unless it, that game arrives on the Monday or there's some special delivery on the weekend, which usually doesn't happen, might be pushing that off to next Friday. We'll see. Oh, you guys didn't see any of that, but it doesn't matter. That's all good. I'm reading it out. Yeah, there it is. It's on my uh, on my zero page homebrew Twitch stream thread. If you want to check up on that, uh, thanks for hanging out with us, and thanks for hanging out with us, Sid, Sleepy Kitty, Sleepy Cats. Yeah, it's very time sleepy of day. cats. It's it's that time of day. It's the afternoon. It's hot. We're just uh, talking away. Yeah. Put them to sleep. Uh, thanks, Zeptari, Nostalgic, Vitoko, Gamma Dev, Smitty B. Don't eat the squid. It's a good rule. That's a, a uh, rule to live by, my, my guy. Yep, yeah, Vitoko, BR Pocock. Who else? Double Down. Um, whose joystick we used today for a second player on one of the games? Uh, Bahamut. Bahamut. Jury, Jury, uh, that name. We'll call you Bahamut. Uh, Rod Kassler. Fernando Salvio. Thank that's you a, so much a, for your that's awesome That's a god first from game. D&D, by the way. Bahamut. Ah, uh, that's where the name comes from. Lord Ton. Um, Anthony Nelms. Prow7, who won the... Uh, On the coaster the other week. I got to get that in the mail. Maybe today. Might do that today. Rod Castler. What and up? Everybody else who is hanging back. Um, lurking. Enjoying the show. Kicking around. Well, thanks for hanging everybody out. On for YouTube. a nice, nice beefy Hello. three hour stream for everyone. Is it three? That's what they oh, said. Oh, pretty close. 450. 450. Well, that level 20 kicked our ass. So. Um, yeah, so have a great weekend, everyone. Stay cool, stay safe, and we will see you soon, if not on Tuesday. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, Bye -bye. everyone. Bye.